Agatu and I'm very good morning. I think probably to some of you are my colleagues and some of you are my students. But I would like to welcome to all of you to these workshops. Uh, it's actually like being organized by KH. And after this, I think they will be introducing themselves. So this is going to be one and a half day workshop, am I right? Yeah. One and a half day. It's going to be uh, today and uh, tomorrow. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to pass to Sensi to introduce yes. okay. Yuki. Yuki Sensei, please. Uh, hopefully, I don't think we want a very, want a very casual, right? So they can be very happy and us and yeah, exactly. <laughs> not too quiet. No, they don't be too serious because yeah. this is not like, uh, you know, any exercise that, you know, it requires you to interact with each other, smile, you know? Okay, so please don't be too serious and be casual about this. Okay, please. Thank you very much. So again, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so let me start today and tomorrow's workshop. We are from Keigo University, Japan. So at the beginning of workshop, I would like to introduce our staff and our university and our program and today's workshop. And you will start the workshop, real workshop. So maybe please be, patient, please be patient at least 30 minutes or one hour. We have some lectures at the beginning. And then, enjoy. OK? First of all, let me introduce last year's activity. This is the second time to have workshop. And last year, we visited here, 2015. And we have the same number of participants, around 20 persons, have come to here, and we introduced. And she's Nazia. She was selected as a candidate student. And we invited her to Keio University, Japan. And she's there. She's there? She's there. <laughs> and of course, she will introduce by herself about this experience later. <coughs> and the first of all, what is the purpose of today's visit? So I would like to, we would like to host innovative thinking workshop. So after this workshop, you have realized the real meaning of innovative thinking. Innovative thinking is one of the most important words for us and of course for you. So at this moment, just innovative thinking is uh, innovative thinking. But after you experience the workshop, you have realized the true meaning of what you can understand. You understand how to do this. So please enjoy. And among the participants, Somebody has already sent us the CVs, but I we would like to recruit some candidates for prospective students for this year's KOH program. This will be held starting from this coming September to December, held in Japan. So just one student we have we are going to invite you to Japan. And travel fare, tuition, and housing expense will be paid by our son. But we don't provide academic credit. But you have so many kinds of experience. You will visit many places during your stay in Japan. So it's quite fun, quite exciting. So if you didn't, you haven't sent CVs at this moment. Now you can prepare. We will accept additional CVs until maybe today's 8 o'clock in the evening or around so. Okay? One minute. 
And today's schedule starting from 10 to 12 and uh, 1 to 7. Uh, 1 to 5 at the meeting, uh, at the workshop. And also tomorrow morning. In the morning, we will continue to do some workshop. And then we will announce the candidates for one interview. Maybe a few. Three or four or five. I will direct some people. And then I would like to inter uh, interview individual interviews so that we can select just one most brilliant student. Okay? And first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Yoki, Associate Professor of Keio University System Design Management, Graduate School of System Design and Management. And now I'm teaching systems engineering or design project, just like this kind of workshop. My previous experience, basically, I'm an electrical engineer. I used to be a satellite system engineer. So I designed many satellites. Some of them are still in orbit, working in orbit, in space. And also, I was working for Japanese government, and I, I was in charge of international cooperation in space development of space technology between Japan and other countries. So I have already visited so many places, including South America, Africa, and Asian countries. And during my experience in company or organization, uh, the basic topic was space, satellite technology or space technology. And also, I have applied Japanese astronaut selection. So I have tried, I have applied four times for Japanese astronaut selection and all failed. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I am here. <laughs> I, I succeeded, I will be in space <laughs> right now. But now I'm here. And so during my experience regarding space topic, I designed satellite and I uh, considered the strategic business plan in space uh, business and also international cooperation in space. Also the public relations or business promotion regarding space business. So just one topic, space, but I did many point of view regarding space. This experience was very, very important for me. And then they are combined, and now I'm teaching some uh, very uh, abstract engineering uh, topic or method currently. But based on this kind of experience, I can teach to the students. So this is my introduction. So second, Tomita-san. I would like to introduce Mr. Tomita. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yoshikaz Tomita. It is hard to pronounce, so please call me Yoshi. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm from uh, business domain, yes. And so I was studying uh, several companies, uh, one manufacturing company and then a consulting firm and so uh, managing consulting firm and some other companies. So now, uh, unfortunately, I'm still running my own company and 10 years, yes? Not bankrupt, <laughs> still running. So um, also I'm teaching at the uh, Keio University, System and Management, and also Keio Edge Program. And, and I'm teaching at the uh, Kansei Gaku University uh, MBA class. So, now, uh, so I'll teach class about uh, system engineering and uh, innovative thinking. So, uh, 
So this is my third time visit to UN. Yes, I'm very glad to meet again and very glad to talk about uh, with you about innovative thinking and entrepreneurship and innovation. Okay. Thank you. faculty member of System Design and Management at Keio University. And um, I'm a project assistant professor teaching um, design project for the students of the master course. And my background is uh, information architecture and information design, um, especially for the contents for the website. And also I uh, was um, I've been doing a lot of translation work, English to Japanese to English. And um, I've been um, I've been doing the business for the website design and translation for as a rich work corporation for uh, like 17 years. And uh, I'll do the most of the part of the workshop, so I'll I'll talk a lot, so I quit now. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this workshop. Thank you for coming. And I would like to introduce TA's teaching assistant. First teaching assistant is Mr. Kobori. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Yasuhiki Kobori, a Keio University student and uh, construction company of uh, Japan. Uh, my job is uh, engineering, uh, electrical engineering and uh, um, construction and maintenance and uh, wind power plant. Uh, my special skill is uh, climb the vertical ladder 80 meters <laughs> very fast. <laughs> climb, climb, climbing, climbing the vertical ladder. <laughs> so uh, please enjoy. Thank you. And next to TA, I would like to introduce from NASA. Please come to two astronauts and teaching assistants. So let me introduce Powder and Nazia. They are also 2015 invited students from Asian universities. And first, can I ask you your introduction? Good morning. Um, my name is Powder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Thailand, and I am the participants in last year. Um, actually, I work in, in Thailand um, as a product manager in the printing factory, and um, I'm very happy to be here. And my experience in Keio H last year was very extremely fun and extremely I think it's one of the best thing in my life. So I wish everyone could come and have a good experience with me. So thank you. Hi, I'm Nazia. Okay, this is me. I was the 2015 KU H participant selected for the H program. Um, I'm from University of Malaya, Faculty of Medicine actually. So no, in no way am I related to engineering, but I had a great time in Keio. I think it's an awesome experience, and I think all Malaysians, and especially University of Malaya students, should apply and experience what I experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maja and Powder. So they have so many experience. One experience, they visited the Tsukuba Space Center in Japan. And, uh, and then they visited Nozan, Japanese Nozan, isolated very small island, Okushide Island. Visited so many times. How many times? Three times? Three times. Four times? Three. Four times. 
Uh, <laughs> and they enjoy the Japanese wearing kimono or uh, very Japanese style life. And of course, they have studied so many things, not just visiting many places. And for Mazia, she will make us some very detailed presentation after my presentation. Okay, this time, just a brief introduction. So thank you very much. So now, let me introduce our university, Keiwo University. So, how many of you, you have already known Keiwo University, the name of Keiwo University, before this workshop? How many? Just one? <laughs> Any other? <laughs> very honest. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is why I am here to introduce my, our university. So, the Keio University founded in 1858, almost 160 years ago. One of the oldest private universities in Japan. And founder is Yukichi Fukuzawa. Do you know Yukichi Fukuzawa? No. Of course not. <laughs> yes. But all the Japanese people know his name and also his face. All the Japanese, no exception. Can you imagine that? Can you guess the reason? Why? No exception. And he's very famous. Very famous. Oh, uh, no. Is there any answer? Uh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he is Mr. Yukichi, oh. our founder. So this is the highest note in Japan. So many people, not many, all the people know his face and name. And we have almost 3,000 faculty and more than 33,000 students. The similar size of MU? No? And we have so many alumni. And among alumni, three prime ministers of Japan and two astronauts, not me, <laughs> but other two. <laughs> And also, I would like to introduce our graduate school. System, Design, and Management. We are from Graduate School of System, Design, and Management. And this graduate school is Japan's first and only graduate school regarding methodologies of system design and management. And <coughs> So we are teaching systems engineering and design thinking and project management. Not just limited to one specific topic or one specific major like physics or electrical engineering or literature or law, but we are studying so multidisciplinary, no, interdisciplinary uh, topic. And also innovative innovation design for entrepreneurs. This is our KO SDM. And also let me introduce H program. H program is basically the Japanese government pro program funded by MEX. MEX is a Ministry of Education. And background of this project is the many research driven innovative activities. In Japan, there are so many innovative activities from researchers. But the business point of view, it is not very good situation. And the government intention is to enhance activities such as generating entrepreneurial ventures or developing human resources related related to entrepreneur. 
This is a primary intention of Japanese government and also the primary intention of this H program. And also, the important point is these kinds of activities should be sustainable, not just one-time activities. So, the innovation ecosystem should be established through this program. This is the most important point. And currently, the 30 universities in Japan have the similar project, including our Keio University. So the next chart, I would like to introduce just Keio specific edge program. Our focus is innovative thinking approach. Okay, again, I would like to introduce you that this word, innovative thinking approach. And also innovators in global context. Global context is not just who can speak English or who can visit foreign country many times, but also so many aspects of uh, global. We'd like to introduce the philosophy of this will be uh, through this workshop. And our KOH program is uh, consists uh, consists from two parts: intensive workshop and project work. Let me introduce the very general schedule of this year. In September, we have intensive workshop for one, two, three, four, five, six days. And after that, we have project-based learning type uh, course, starting from the beginning of October to beginning of December. This is a tentative schedule of this year's KOH program. So the detailed dates will be uh, maybe changed, but basic uh, the schedule is like this. So after introduction of our program and ourselves, let me start somehow the contents of our workshop. So innovation, the word innovation is very familiar to you. You have heard so many times of this word. And now we'd like to introduce one specific definition of this word. So there are so many definitions of the word innovation, but we KOSDM uses this one. So this definition is has two parts. The first part is innovation is a process of turning opportunity into new ideas. This is somehow the original, very similar to original innovation meaning. So very new service, new products, new technology means this one. And the this part is putting this into widely used practice. This one is the more important in this definition. So not just new technology, not just new service, but also this kind of service or product should be used, widely used in society by people. Okay? New idea, new service, new product should be used in society. This definition is most important. So please accept this definition throughout today's and tomorrow's workshop. Innovation is like this. So now, let me explain the difference between innovation and innovative. How is different? Just, just noun and adjective is a difference, of course. But somehow, the meaning is slightly different. So let me introduce an innovation example. 
Okay? And also, later, I will introduce innovative examples. So through this, I would like to show you two kinds of movies. So throughout these two examples, please feel the difference between innovation and innovation. So, so first, this is a... Uh, please watch Hi, I'm Graham, and this is my twin brother. Ten years ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia, but thankfully, his life was saved by a complete stranger who had registered to be a marrow donor. He was lucky, though. You see, more than 650,000 people are diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma every year. And for the most severe cases, like my brother's, a marrow transplant is their last hope. But only about half find a match. Unfortunately, the marrow donor registry is one of the most underrepresented donor programs in the world. And it's no wonder, really. Most people think that registering as a marrow donor is painful and complicated. But really, all it takes is a couple drops of blood. The only pain is actually finding a way to register. Now, you have to either take time out of your busy day to go to a special doctor, or order a registration kit online, pay $16 for it, and while you're at it, pay for the shipping. We've made it so difficult to register. It's amazing that a few good people out there care enough to jump through all these hoops just to save a random person's life. But the fact is, most don't. Imagine, though, how many lives could be saved if registering as a marrow donor wasn't so hard. What if we could turn a normal, everyday act into a chance to save a life? Introducing Help. I want to save a life. A package of over-the-counter bandages that also doubles as a simple marrow donor registry kit. So the next time you cut yourself shaving or shuffling papers or making dinner, and you reach for a box of bandages, you'll have a chance to save someone's life. You just put a couple of drops of blood in the swabs, toss it in the prepaid envelope, drop it in the mail, and that's it. You're a potential lifesaver. This simple idea brought together a pretty unlikely pair. Help Remedies, a pharmaceutical company, and DKMS, the world's largest marrow donor registry. And then something pretty amazing happened. The TED conference chose it as one of their favorite ideas of the year, and even helped us launch it at this year's global conference. And since then, the whole world's helped us spread the word and share our story. And in just a few short months, sales of health bandages are already up more than 1900%. But amongst all these sales figures and media impressions and YouTube hits, there's really only one statistic that matters. Thanks to this little pack of bandages, marrow registrations have nearly tripled. Who would have thought a few paper cuts could make a world of difference? and actually save lives. Oh. I wonder, is this new technology, new material? No, there is no new technology, new material just a bandage but some very new and good idea combined the bandage product manufacturer and also marrow donor society and then the marrow donor registration tripled and also the sales of bandage so many increased so much increased so this is a new idea and widely used in the society. This is why I would like to introduce you as an innovation example. Okay, so next one, I would like to introduce innovative example. Okay, so please feel the difference. So the innovative, this is a somehow the definition. So introducing or uh, using new ideas or method, having new ideas about how something can be done. Okay? So please watch.
So it's really fun. This is uh, from the movie from the website named Fun Theory. And this is very new and good idea. And this kind of fun will move people to do something. So please put the garbage into the garbage box. Sometimes people try to tell many people again and again, but they won't. But once this kind of people easy to do, are willing to do. So this is a very innovative idea, but this is just for a short period, maybe just a few days or one week. Not will be lasting more than one year or ten years. So this is will this will not be lasting. This is why this is not innovation, but innovative. So innovation is widely accepted or widely used by society. And innovative is the idea is innovation, very related to innovation, but not so long, long lasting or widely used. This is the difference between innovation and innovative. So innovation is cannot uh, determine by myself, by ourselves. But people will decide whether people accept it or not. This is the difference of innovation and innovative. So today, you can do the innovative thing. Innovative is your approach, not widely accepted, not necessarily widely accepted to the society. So you try to think innovatively is the most important point of today's workshop, okay? And one thing I would like to tell you, the text material will be provided later. So you don't have to copy. You can take your notes or memos, but you don't have to copy the screen. We will provide you later, okay? So, let me continue my explanation. So, innovative, the word innovative is the keyword of KOH, somehow the flavor, KOH flavor. And innovative is, in other words, thinking outside the box. Can you imagine the word outside the box? So you have some box inside your brain or your heart. And today, you have to go out of your box. Okay, try to go out of your box, from your box. And what kind of box? Your box or a certain organization box, this university's box, or certain domain's box, technical, engineering, law, medical, and also certain countries' box, Malaysia, Japan, Thailand, other countries. So everybody or every organization has hidden box, but you have to clearly imagine the box and try to go out of the box. This is the most important point of innovative thinking. So, we usually use think outside the box. So, you can't see clearly this kind of box, but please close your eye and please imagine what is your box and how to go out from your box. So today, tomorrow, you try to go outside the box. And also new value proposition. The value or value proposition will be explained later from Kyoko Sensei. And also KOH program scope is like this. The first of all, understand 
why. First step is understand why and define what and ideate and synthesize how. Okay, this sequence is very, very important. Starting with why and then what and last you think how. This sequence is very much important. And also, the program design consists from this kind of structure. So you are going to find new value creation. But you have already have some domain knowledge. If you are an ele electrical engineer, you have some knowledge regarding electrical engineering. And if another domain, you have some knowledge regarding some domains. And also the interdisciplinary approach or design thinking or system thinking and also business thinking will be combined so that you will generate new value creation. Okay? This is the structure of our KOH design and of course we will provide KOH course so that this kind of all the skills or knowledge will be enhanced. So starting from September 17th, to think innovative, to think human-centered, to think as system, and prototyping, business synthesis, and business process exercise. So during these seven days, you have much improved your thinking or way of thinking. So if when you join our program, you can study or you can experience like this kind of class or course. So, please enjoy today's workshop. Thank you very much for watching. So, starting from now, so Mazia, who was invited as a representative of Malaysia, introduced our experience. Just 
land in um, Narita Airport or Haneda Airport, buy a Pasmo Suica card. Now this Pasmo Suica card is actually your touch and go. Okay? So it's accepted anywhere. And oh, register for Yamada 3G data plan. Yamada 3G data plan is like Cellcom, Maxis or DG. And the last train, you should be wary about this because it's around midnight. Try not to miss it because you won't be able to go back home and you end up having to either sleep in, in the streets, which is safe, don't worry, but it's expensive for you to book a hotel. It's around 5,000 yen, 150, just for a small bunk bed. And for, for Muslims, <laughs> food is very, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go into detail with that. And uh, tips for Muslims, bring your own shoyu sauce, because most of the shoyu sauce in Japan has alcohol in it, so, okay. And this is the edge program that they gave the room hotel, hotel host, hostel, in inverted commas. It's actually a hotel um, facility. It's very nice. And uh, the the uh, here the toilet is automatic. So yeah, it's automatic. So yeah, you might not be able to press the bidet because it will automatically press it for you. <laughs> So you might be wary about that. And then, from the, the room, on a nice weather, you can actually see Mount Fuji. Very beautiful, okay? And this is the Edge workshop uh, room, where you can do 3D printing. They have 3D printers, about three 3D printers, and a few other very savvy, techy machines that I, even I don't know how to use. <laughs> but it'll be very helpful TAs who can help you on how to print your your, your project when you go there, okay? And for Muslims again, the famous uh, mosque that you can do for Friday prayers for guys, or um, you'll be celebrating Hajj festival there, yeah? So you can go to Tokyo Kami Mosque, which is in Yoyogi Uehara Station. Remember this, it's very important, okay? For me, for me. <laughs> and okay, this is the kanji. You must remember all of this kanji, very important. This means alcohol. This means, oh, okay, this is, means mirin, which is a type of alcohol. And this is alukoru, which is alcohol. And this means pork. And also this one, pork. So, please, if you find this kanji in any of the ingredients, do not, do not, do not buy it or eat it. And this kanji here is the Hiyoshi Station. So if you want to go home, this is the kind you look for. <laughs> oh, just snap a picture and just ask anyone in the, the, the station and say, I want to go here. They will understand. They will help you. They will even go home with you. <laughs> Very helpful people. Okay? And then, okay, to business. So projects. We have three projects. One is team-based project. Okay? And then you have individual work and field work. I suppose field work would be Okushi again? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Okay. Anytime. I would like to wish all of you good luck for Okushi project. <laughs> okay? Um, so basically the project based work will be about two and a half months. We'll be working with uh, an, an additional four or five Japanese students about or, uh, or, or other foreign students. Um, they'll give a theme, which I suppose would be healthcare again. So you have to work on something very innovative or creative <laughs> about this. So this is the bulk of your project, which is project-based work. And for individual work, usually since all of us um, accepted in KO Edge program will be like master students or PhD students, so you'll be working on your individual work. And field work, unfortunately, will be okushi again. So, okay, look forward to that. <laughs> And um, this is the secret recipe, as Kane Sensei. You'll meet Kane Sensei. Kane Sensei is like he's he's Captain Japan, or, like Captain America of Japan. Okay, so the secret recipe will be problem definition, ideation, architecting, and business synthesis, which I find very similar to UCD Islands Design Thinking program. So you can actually see. There's empathy, definition, ideation, prototyping, and testing. It's almost the same, you see. Right? Okay. So, next. The schedule I had when I went there in 2015 was seven days of intensive workshop. It starts at nine, ends at eight. So, be prepared. <laughs> so, it's only seven days. 
you think you've passed the, the difficult, most difficult part. But I think for me, it's the project work because this is 24-7. They'll call you at 3 a.m. saying that, I have an idea, Mazia. Let's go meet up. Where? In KOS, third floor. Now it's 3 a.m. No. I, I, my, 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 my ideation is just flowing. I, I need to meet you now. So that's the most difficult part for me. I'm like, I'm sleepy. I want to sleep. Okay. <laughs> one of the, the one of the yeah yeah one of the the, the members. Uh, Paul has a very uh, Paul, my my Thailand friend, who is also the Edge participant in 2015. She has a very um, how do I say? I cannot describe her. Energetic, energetic, yes, energetic <laughs> participant. Okay. And uh, this is for my individual project. I had two supervisors. This is Kane. This is Captain America of Japan. <laughs> he, <laughs> he is on a quest to salvage Japan. <laughs> yeah. And Hiroshi Sensei. He's very he's very jovial. He's just so relaxed, happy. He's a happy man. So you'll be happy to work with him. And my project, which is uh, involves a uh, spinal cord injury, because I'm from Faculty of Medicine, it's about designing and rapid prototyping of a virtual reality exam. I know if I go to Faculty of Medicine, people will say I'm crazy. This is nothing to do with your project, but yeah, I'll show them. <laughs> okay, and this is my personal development. <laughs> my parents always say I am their unhappy child because I don't smile. <laughs> I don't smile. If I go home, they talk about happy things. I'll be like, mm -hmm, I'm not interested. Okay, I want to go sleep. But when I sent them this picture here, when I was in the Edge program. They said this is the biggest smile they've seen of me in years. <laughs> so Edge must be really interesting for me, to, for, them, for it to make me smile this, this hugely, okay? So usually I look like this. <laughs> okay? All right, and this is my character of how I feel like I've changed. Before Edge, I'm extrovert and socially unforgiving. It's like if you're late, even 10 minutes, I'll be like, nee, 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 you shouldn't be late. But I'm able to give in more when I was in Edge. I'm like, okay, okay, it's okay, I understand. And I usually follow my heart and not other people's advice when I make a decision. But after Edge, I listen to my heart still, but I follow my system in design thinking. Like, yeah. And I sigh more often than I smile. But in Edge, I, just, I don't know why, I keep on smiling and smiling and smiling. Everyone says that. It makes me feel crazy. And I am hard-headed, always. Still am. And before I want to go to Edge, I want to be rich. Seriously. Anything, money, 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 money. But after Edge, get rich or die trying. So stop me if you can. And this is the best part. I've always wanted to feel connected to Japan. I've studied Japanese since I was in secondary school. And I've been enthralled by Japanese history since I was 10 years old. And now, I finally feel very connected to, the, to Japan. So I think this is the most memorable experience I had. Okay, very touching. And uh, now I have a dream. I think I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> I think, I think. But this suit actually uh, is 140 kilograms. Yeah. Yeah. Was it 200 kilograms? Oh, 200 kilograms. Ah, I don't think so. I can. <laughs> and there are a lot of side side effects, health side effects if you are an astronaut. Something like cardiomegaly, where your heart actually enlarges because of the heavy, um, heavy astronaut suit that you have to wear constantly. Okay. So maybe, maybe. And um, I, if you are very active or energetic, and you you know you want to socialize more with people from KU, um, I think you can arrange yourself like uh, with the help of the senses from KU. Like I went to the KU University Hospital. Because I'm in from Faculty of Medicine, where I actually saw, uh, met um, a very distinguished professor in KO, which is in rehabilitation medicine. Um, met how what they did, which is similar to my virtual reality exam game. I'm happy about that. So I'm trying to show my supervisor. See, the Japanese are doing it, so why not us? So probably they'll accept and give me some money about that. <laughs> and then Okushi, yeah. <laughs> I shall repeat again. Good luck, I look forward to it. <laughs> I won't explain much, but you get to wear um, the yukata, which is the traditional Japanese um, kimono. 
and you, add, you get to eat a lot of delicious Okushui food. And maybe you can go to what, uh, Sapporo, this is Sapporo, which is also northern part of Japan. So it's not all about work, it's also about traveling and meeting new people. And oh, <laughs> this is my favorite trip. Have anyone heard of Square Enix Company? Yes? Any hands? Show of hands? Awesome! Please memorize this name. Victor and also... Okay, he's not in the picture, I'm sorry. He can arrange you for you to actually visit this company. It's a very famous um, video game company. <laughs> so if, you, if, you are, if you're really a big fan of Square Enix, then you should arrange this trip to Square Enix. They're very helpful, okay? And uh, yeah, fam my family like friends and bros. We have here uh, Yuki, Yushi, uh, Victor, Erlang, Aishani, Pao. She's standing at the back. And this is my brother who actually spent about one and a half weeks there. Twice he came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to visit me. But uh, yeah. And also... Oh, what's his name? <laughs> 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 we missed the plane. Um, the plane was um, cancelled, I remember. Oh, okay. This is because uh, Okushiri is very far from the mainland of Japan. So when I went to Okushiri three times, my pl plane was delayed because of weather conditions. So yeah, this is one of the events that we had to stay one more night <laughs> because of flight delays. And this guy is from Otoki. I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I also discussed with my so-called board members and directors because mm -hmm. I want to start up a company which is involving virtual reality and game <laughs> and make money and be rich. So this is a good opportunity. So we had a few talks and also had lunch. And yeah, sad to say nothing came out of it yet. But we're working on it. We're going to start a company, don't worry. Okay. And this is the last day, sadly. Uh, this is Prashant. Preful, Yushi again, you, Aishani, Pao, and me. Okay? This is the last day. Sad day. And this is something for you guys. Because it's a discussion of team, 
between team members, whether which one you want to go to. So that's another story to it. There's a lot of pros and cons to it. But for individual project, uh, most of us actually did what we were doing because most of us are masters and PhD students. So we proceeded with our masters and PhD based projects. Yeah. For field work, I don't think so. You have a just just report, write a report on it. It's the experience of going there that's that's the big problem. <laughs> not just read no, not the writing of the report. Yeah. Any other questions? So Bazir, tomorrow do you come to Yes, yes. I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. So if you have yes. any questions, yes, yes. I'll be happy to answer some of them if I can answer. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, which is hardest, uh, the adapting of the culture or the technical part of joining the program? For me, it's the adapting to the program, the, the project-based work, specifically, specific, specifically. Individual work and field work is very easy for me because I know what I'm doing, I know what must be done. But for project-based work, oh god. <laughs> You'll be fighting amongst yourself to see whose idea is the best idea. Because you want to impress people, there'll be company directors who will come and see your uh, presentation. And if they like it, they might support you. So that's why everybody is really serious about it. But it's difficult for you to be one, you know. You're always with your own ideas. So it's, it's kind of difficult in that sense. But just be strong. <laughs> Then, so you are the next, okay? Please keep in mind. So, we have five minutes break starting from now. So we'll start at uh, 10, oh, 11, 10. So five minutes break. That's why we ask you to mix, you know, not only together with the you know, same category of members and, you know, guys and women, mixture groups. So the, the biggest um, reason for doing the workshop as a group work is to have the diversity in the group and take advantage of it and to collaborate. Okay, and this importance of collaboration is backed up by the, some um, academic papers. And this is from Science from 2010. This is the evidence for the collective intelligence factor in the performance of human groups. So academic literature says that uh, general collective intelligence, here, general collective intelligence factor that explains a group's performance is correlated with the average social sensitivity of group members and in distribution of conversational turn-taking 
and proportion of females in the group. This is very interesting. Um, so the, it says that the social sensitivity, person's social sensitivity is very important to have the collect, collective intelligence rather than individual intellectual you know, capability. And also it correlated with the, um, um, here, conversational turn taking. So if in the group one person dominates the conversation, then the collaboration doesn't work. Right? So you have to have the equal opportunity to you know, take turns in conversation. And also the proportion is females in the group. So today we have a good collaboration <laughs> in many of the groups. So good, lucky men, right? <laughs> so many women. Okay, another um, evidence from academic papers. This is from Harvard Business Review 2004. And this shows that, this chart shows that this is the level of diversity, high and low. And this is level of idea, high and low. So this shows that only when the group has the high level of diversity, Three. the breakthrough idea happens, it's generated. But you have to admit that there are junk ideas too. But this is the only case you have the, you know. Because if the, this uh, diversity means in interdisciplinary, dis disciplinary di diversity, not only the demographic. So if the disciplinary diversity is very low, like you get together with the same, you know, faculty or same, you know, a specialty, then in the average idea is very high. But it's very hard to have the breakthrough ideas. Okay? So, so today you're going to um, have the collaboration and you, have, you want to have the you know, diversity. So uh, team building is very important. So I, have you done this? Can I skip this? Have you done? Already yes. and please name your uh, you know, name. Thank write down your names <laughs> like, like this. And for those who, who applied for the KOH, you know, this year's KOH is candidate. Please circle your name in red so that we can you know, find who are the candidates. Okay. You don't have to write down the bio though. So um, yeah. So I'm gonna gonna skip this. And yeah, team names. Team names also important part. So please have the team name for like I give you five minutes. So please name your team and as innovative as possible. Innovative team name because we're going to work on an innovative solution today. Okay, so just work on uh, naming your team. Five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so when you decide your team name, you write down your team name on the white paper, the TA service. <laughs>
Powder? Powder. What is your team name? Pow. <laughs> team name Pow. Yeah, Pow. Thank <laughs> you. 
eat mushrooms. <laughs> you can break spaghetti if you want. Okay, and if the, the spaghetti is um, unexpectedly broken, we can change, exchange with the new ones. Okay, so build the tall, how do we, how do we know to build the tallest standing structure and have the mushroom on top? The winning team is the one that has the tallest structure measured from the tabletop surface to the top of the mushroom. That means the structure cannot be suspended from a higher structure like a chair sitting. So some people cheat doing you know, sticking some string on the ceiling and <laughs> try to measure the height of the mushroom. Or some people do this. You know that you, you just move the you know height of the table. <laughs> this is not a tabletop. Tabletop is here. Okay? So do not cheat. Okay, so now you have the, all the materials ready on your table. 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard tape. Take this the yellow one on the table. Okay, and one yard string is the yard surrounded grounded by the spaghetti. And one marshmallow. Okay, so we're gonna have 15 minutes. Okay, and build a structure with the spaghetti using tapes and string and put the marshmallow on top. And we're going to measure the mushroom. Okay, so let's start. So you have the clock back, back side. Yes. Already started. It's already started, and we are counting the time in the back of this room, so please check the time.
video explains why this is a good activity for this kind of innovative thinking. Okay, please take a look. And the idea is pretty simple. Teams of four have to build the tallest freestanding structure out of 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard of tape, one yard of string, and a marshmallow. The marshmallow has to be on top. And though it seems really simple, it's actually pretty hard because it forces people to collaborate very quickly. And so I thought this was an interesting idea and I incorporated it into a design workshop and it was a huge success. And since then I've conducted about 70 design workshops across the world with students and designers and architects, even the CTOs of the Fortune 50. And there's something about this exercise that reveals very deep lessons about the nature of collaboration and I'd like to share some of them with you. So normally most people begin by orienting themselves to the task. They talk about it, they figure out what it's going to look like, they jockey for power, then they spend some time planning, organizing, they sketching, they lay out spaghetti. Uh, they spend the majority of their time assembling the sticks into ever-growing structures, and then finally, just as they're running out of time, someone takes out the marshmallow, and then they gingerly put it on top, and they stand back, and ta -da! They admire their work. But what really happens most of the time is that the tada turns into an uh-oh <laughs> the entire structure to buckle and to collapse. So there are a number of people who have a lot more uh-oh moments than others. And among the worst are recent graduates of business school. <laughs> They lie, they cheat, they uh, get distracted, they, and they produce really lame structures. And of course, there's teams that have a lot more ta-da structures, and among the best are recent graduates of kindergarten. <laughs> and it's pretty amazing, as Peter tells us. Uh, not only do they, do they produce the tallest structures, but they're the most interesting structures of them all. So the question you want to ask is, how come? Why? What is it about them? And Peter likes to say that none of, the, none of the kids spend any time trying to be CEO of Spaghetti Inc., right? They don't time, spend time jockeying for power. But there's another reason as well. And the reason is that business students are trained to find the single right plan, right? And then they execute on it. And then what happens is when they put the marshmallow on the top, they run out of time, and what happens? It's a crisis. Sound familiar, right? Okay, what kindergartners do differently is that they start with the marshmallow and they build prototypes, successive prototypes, always keeping the marshmallow on top. So they have multiple times uh, to, to fix and build prototypes along the way. So designers recognize this type of collaboration as the essence of the iterative process. And with each version, kids get instant feedback about what works and what doesn't work. So the capacity to play in the prototype is, is really essential. But let's look at how different teams perform. So the average for most people is around 20 inches, business school students, about uh, half of that, lawyers, a little better, but not much better than that, kindergartens, better than most adults, who does the very best? <laughs> Architects and engineers. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> 39 inches is the tallest structure uh, I've seen. Why is it? Because they understand triangles and self-reinforcing geometrical patterns are the key to building self-reinforcing uh, uh, stable structures. So uh, CEOs, a little bit better than average, but here's where it gets interesting. If you put an executive admin on the team, they get significantly better. <laughs> You know, you look around, you go, oh, that seems good. You can just tell before me. And why is that? Because they have special skills of facilitation. They manage the process. They understand the process. And any team who manages and pays a close attention to, to work uh, will significantly improve the team's performance. Specialized skills and facilitation skills, uh, the combination leads to, to strong success. If you have 10 teams that typically perform, you'll get maybe six or so that are standing structures. And then I, I tried something interesting. I thought, let's up the ante once. So I offered a $10,000 prize of software to the winning team. So what do you think happened to these design students? What was the result? Here's what happened. 
Not one team had a standing structure. Not one had, uh, uh, if anyone had built, say, um, a one-inch structure, they'd have been taken on the, the pies. So isn't it interesting that high stakes uh, have a strong impact? We did the exercise again with the same students. What do you think happened then? So now they understand the value of prototyping. So the same team went from being the very worst to being among the very best. They produced the tallest structures in the least amount of time. So there's deep lessons for us about the nature of incentives and success. So you might ask, why would anyone actually spend time writing a marshmallow uh, challenge? And the reason is I help create digital tools and processes to help uh, teams build cars and video games and visual effects. Um, and what the marshmallow challenge does is it helps them identify the hidden assumptions. Because frankly, every project has its own marshmallow, doesn't it? The, the challenge provides a shared experience, a common language, a common stance to build the right prototype. And so this is the value of the experience of this so simple exercise. And those of you who are interested may want to go to marshmallowchallenge.com. It's a blog that you can look at how to build uh, the marshmallows. There are step-by-step -step instructions on this. Uh, there are crazy examples from around the world of how people tweak and adjust the system. There's world records that are on this as well. And the fundamental lesson, I believe, is that design truly is a contact sport. Uh, it demands that we bring all of our senses to a task and that we apply the very best of our thinking, our feeling, and our doing to the challenge that we have uh, at hand. And sometimes a little prototype of this experience is all that it takes to turn us from uh, an uh oh moment to a ta-da moment, and that can make a big difference. Thank you very much. Okay. So, how was it? <laughs> so you learn a lot from this activity, right? So these are the major you know, key takeaways from this activity. Actually, um, it says, too much time in thinking, small chances to try. So that means that, you know, the small children, they make many trials, putting on the, you know, marshmallow on the top, and they know that how heavy it is, and how, <laughs> You know, we, how weak the spaghetti string is, right? So if you do this at the end of the activity, you fail. But so fail, fail first. This is very important. Okay, so too much time in thinking. Don't don't spend too much time in thinking and try so many times. Try and fail fast. And another um, lesson from this activity is to. Remember the real goal of your activity. What was the goal of your activity? Marshmallow, right? So not the building the tall tower. We, we, I, I said that we got to measure the height of the marshmallow. So that means that the purpose of this activity is to put the marshmallow on the high place. So that is, um, you know, so it, the, the video also said that in your project, they, there are your own marshmallow, right? But you sometimes forget what, mush, what your marshmallow is, and you're trying to concentrate to other things. So try to find your own marshmallow. Okay, so and, yeah, collaboration with team members works. So that is, uh, um, you know, the, one of the big mean for this inactivity having collaboration with team members and um, you know have the diversity in the team group, group group team okay and the team building why team building this kind of work wrap up for the team building why we workshop to get you ready to conduct interdisciplinary and innovative thinking group work gain experience to think out uh, outside of, of the box like your case has explained you try to go outside of the box. So maybe if you are a scientist, try to go out of the scientist box, okay? <laughs> and what is expected? Be creative, aim for innovative outcome, not the output, but the outcome, and contribute your, your teamwork with your uniqueness, and this is very important, have fun, have fun. <laughs> And what is not expected is be critical, land for feasible, easy outcome, 
these are not expected. And turning off your logical part of brain. Even this is the you know innovative thinking and design thinking activities, but still you need logical part. Okay? Okay, and this kind of activity is actually done in so many engineering fields. Actually, design thinking and D school, design school, um, have you ever heard of the Stanford D school? Yeah. So um, D school is actually um, founded by the mechanical engineering faculty in Stanford University. So to, to have the, because of uh, the engineering students and you know, medical students, those, of course, the scientists, those um, minded students and faculty members are more like thinking in the you know, left brain logical, very logical, but they need something to do with the, the design thinking. So that's why they started the design school. Okay, so this school is yeah, uh, generated at the Stanford University Engineering. And also MIT is a, a, a very famous engineering school. And they also have the system design and management. And also, this is um, started to be learned at the very famous business schools too in the world, like Harvard University Business School and Kellogg, uh, at the Kellogg School. And this is the design thinking, process thinking, and at the Northwestern University. Okay, so. Um, given that, uh, please be um, noted that these kind of activities are done in the very uh, high, you know, high-end university education in America and all over the, the world, and of course, you know, in this country and some part in Japan. So um, it's going to be very, very important aspect to you know to this kind of you know future work. So um, it's a little bit, um, it's the, like t 12, 10, so you must be hungry for lunch. <laughs> so we're going to take one hour break for lunch, okay? And please get back here at 1, 10, like 1, 10. Okay, yeah. And this is a special reward for the winning team. Okay, this is a prize. So congratulations. <laughs> These are actually a Star Wars, Star Wars notebook, and we have KO University has done this with the collaboration with <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> okay, so dismissed for lunch. <laughs>
We do problem definition, ideation, architecting, and business synthesis. And this looks like uh, linear, but these are not the steps. These are the process. That means that you, okay, alongside the, this line, you have research and analysis and other processes. And you go up and down to this each uh, process and research process and actually there must be many iteration takes place so not only one you know phase and then step one step two step three but you keep iterating you go back and forth and up and down so many iteration takes place. And what drives the iteration is insights. Insights is the very important uh, elements to drive these iterations. And what are the insights? What are the insights? Finding insights. I think um, Mazia and Carter know a lot about this insight because uh, during the work, I mean the, the progr program, almost uh, every time, you know, instructors keep saying, what is the insight out of the work? Insight, what's the insight? So the insight, this is a, a kind of a, a dictionary. From a dictionary, it says that it's an instance of app apprehending the true nature of a thing, especially, especially through intuitive understanding. So this is not a logical, just not, not just a logical thing, but intuitive understanding. And also it says that seeing into inner character or underlying truth. So the truth is all already truth, but it says underlying truth. So something hidden behind the truth. So try to you know find some what is you know behind the truth. That's going to be finding insight. 
and it also says penetrating mental vision. So insight as a driving force. So insight shows the new direction and dimension to create innovative solutions. You can find insight from your discussions, outputs, and outcomes. So using the, some kind of um, you know, tools, we're going to introduce three tools of, uh, together with uh, tomorrow, three, four tools and methods during the workshop. And using the tools is not just to uh, come up with the output, but out of the output, you try to find insights to make the next activity happen. Okay, so... This is one of the very um, famous example of insight as a driving force. I think everybody knows USB memory, right? And this is actually born out of his insight. He is a, a concept creator and strategist. Uh, his name is Hideshi Hamaguchi. He's a Japanese concept creator. And he calls himself business designer, innovation designer. And he is uh, now working for Ziva, which is a uh, famous American uh, design firm and also he owns his own company called Monogoto and he's also uh, uh, one of the uh, KOSDM professor and out of his insight he had this concept of USB memory and this is how he found this uh, in, in 1990 the, the, those times uh, with the emerging um, act as a, the data is growing bigger and bigger because they many many people are using digital cameras and PowerPoint files, so they they need you know bigger bigger data storage. And what they have at that time was floppy disk, and this was not enough, right? So he put this chart thinking about the future data storage management. And this is the user experience, tangible and intangible, and this is the size of data. So for the future, everybody was thinking about the you know, Wi-Fi, wireless technology like cloud data storage. But his insight was here. He focused on this place. And his insight was, we want tangible experience even if everything is going to be wireless because when you when you uh, give some very important file to someone else maybe it's you know it's secured to have some t tangible thing right physical thing not just the wireless right so this is his insight and he thought about the concept of usb memory Okay, so the insight is very important to make something happen. So what does insight take, taste like? It's, this is one aspect of you know, insight. It's usual, uh, it's unusual, but interesting. It's interesting, but unusual. It means something new. I've never thought about it, but it's interesting. And unfamiliar but convincing, like the insight he found. It's unfamiliar, but that's true. Convincing, right? Okay, so when we find, when we find insight in entire scope, this, as Yoki Sensei has explained, we have why domain, what domain, how domain, why part, uh, what's important, why do we do, and what we do, and how we do, and if you find insight in why and what domain, you will be able to find innovative how. So today you're going to find many insights from this domain, okay? Not only how domain. All right, so this is the process of today and tomorrow workshop. 
through this all the process, we do problem definition using using this two by two matrix. This is a tool, and for ideation, we do brainstorming. And architect and business synthesis, I'm gonna introduce CBC a, a, a tool called CBCA, which is a customer value chain analysis. I think we're gonna do that tomorrow. And of course, we're gonna you you guys are going to find many insights out of out of your work and iteration. Okay, and that, their iteration happens like this. When you do this work activity using some tool or method, input one of the input is yourself, you know, collective intelligence and diversity as a group work, and then some to some theme or question into this work. And the output from the output you find some findings, just findings, and out of these findings try to find insight, okay? And this insight drives you to the next activity. So if this is the using tools, some activity using tools, then it goes back here, and this is the iteration, okay? So, the context again, healthcare, and you are a PBL team, PBL, project-based learning team, working on innovative healthcare solution business development. You have a big consensus of life log concept. Now you want to, to explore the solution space for life log healthcare solution. So, no more lunch break. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. So first part is problem definition. Here. So you have now white paper, board paper and sticker notes, right? And problem definition. It can be said that it is more difficult to find an innovative idea or solution for an ordinary problem or question. So if you tackle uh, one problem, if it's the problem is very big, then it's very hard to find the solution. So like this, like this is an example. Example: How can we improve the automobile gas mileage? That's a big question, right? And all the automobile companies are trying to tackle this problem. So if you have a chance to work for this, then you cannot beat them. They have, you know, thinking about this for many years, right? So you try to redefine your own problem. Okay, so define your problem or question so it is unfamiliar but interesting and also important. Like, how can we improve the accumulated gas mileage of a person and his or her cars in a time frame of 10 years. So it, this says that automobile gas mileage, even if the you know, same car, same gas mileage, it is quite personal, right? So it depends on you know, how you drive, where you drive, it changes, right, the gas mileage. So this is to focus on the personal gas mileage. So their definition is the personal gas mileage. Right? So this is the totally different problem definition. So try to think the other way of problem. Okay? So try to find innovative problem space that is fascinating and worth investing time to explore. And this is also called reframing a problem. Okay, so redefine or re reframe the problem. And one example here. Have you ever seen this before? This is staple free stapler. 
we have this product out of Kokuyo, uh, which is the stationary manufacturer. And Harinax, it's called Harinax. Hari is stable. And their definition here, so they, they, they're going to try to make uh, some innovative stapler. And they thought, if they thought um, about some you know, new stapler, they would think about something doing with the sta staples, right? Because a stapler has staples. But their definition may be, how about we staple documents without using staples? The manufacturer is not stuck with their bias for conventional stapler. And ha have you ever heard of this kind of product? No? no nobody knows. It, there's no staples in, the, in this product and you just push the, you know, two, three sheets of paper and it, it makes a hole and it binds the, you know, two, three sheets of paper. So it, it sticks together without, you know, glue or staples. Okay? So I think, uh, you know, their definition was maybe without staples we can help create, you know, stapler. So these are, this is one of the example and problem definition there are so many approaches you can use design thinking approach like field work observation and also system thinking approach so find interesting insight and define problem using uh, so many other approach some are like research, Google search, data analysis, and after, you know, expert interviews, maybe you have some problem definition, redefined problem definition. And, of course, your domain knowledge and network. It really works. Okay, so I'm going to give you some more examples. Uh, as I said, um, we do this kind of work in high school, girls high school, and one of the group had this problem, I mean, as a, as a problem, the, the, the theme for the group activity, global warming. They wanted to tackle global warming, they said. But global warming is a very big thing, right? So they had an interview and field work, and they asked some you know, friends and parents, about this matter. And after the, this activity, they found that everybody tried to do something to do, you know, for the global, against the global warming, but they didn't, no, they, they can't find how they, how good they are doing. So there are redefined problems. This. How might we make people quickly feel that what they did contributes to stop global warming. So this is their redefined problem. So they, of course they, you know, sometimes turn off their, you know, lights and they do so many things, but they don't know, you know, how it is contribute to this matter, global warming. Is it working or not? So maybe they want to know how, you know, work, how, um, how much contribution they are making to stop this. Okay, this is one of the examples. And another example is the trash can. Uh, like uh, you saw, just saw the you know, video, fun theory. So that was the real original problem was how to clean litter on the ground in the park, right? But redefined problem could be, how might we make people feel like throwing litter into a trash can? Okay? So try to have another view to the problem, is the redefining the problem. And one other thing, um, have you ever been to Disneyland? Yes, yes. And have you ever seen um, 
people sweeping with a broom, the cleaning you know, stuff. Machine. Machine? Yes, some people, you know, have a broom, broom, and cleaning. Have you? No? So the problem is how to clean litter on the ground in, on, in Disney now. And we define problem is they, they're trying to um, think of the you know upper purpose. Why do they need to you know clean the litter on the ground in the Disneyland? And they come up with this: How about we make visitors spend a pleasant time in Disneyland? Disneyland because this is the upper purpose. They want to have visitors you know enjoying their time in Disneyland, right? So they try to um, entertain even with the cleaning thing. So I, I want, I'm going to show this, I hope this works. Thank you for being here. And we'll start off just handing out stickers and guide maps. And then they get some Mickey hands. So this is how they do for the cleaning work. We're a phrase called Pixie Custodio, which is really all about how our custodians can really make magic for our guests each and every day. I think it's absolutely beautiful. We didn't know what it was at first. And uh, by the time we got done with it, it's a great drawing. I can't believe how nice it came out with only water. Actually, that's an idea we got from our friends and partners over in Tokyo, Tokyo Disneyland. And we partnered with our folks over at the end. This is actually what they do. They draw the you know, Mickey Mouse or some other characters with a broom. And uh, next thing you know, we were using our regular props, our pans, which uh, could hold the water in the brooms, which we used to sweep up garbage all day. So again, we used the tools of our trade to make magic for yeah. us each and every day. So this is to you know, think about the upper purpose. It's a real treasure. We can only last a few minutes in the morning sun, you know. Originally, what do they, what, what do they need to do is to entertain, right? So even for the cleaning work, cleaning job, they, they try to entertain. So this is another, you know, example for the redefining the problem. is um, elevator at the university campus. This is um, actually an example from one of our students at SDM, and he's a, a student from Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, and he said that there was a, a long waiting time for an elevator in the campus. And what they did, that the, the university did for the this problem was this. They put the mirror on the elevator front. So they, they changed, just changed the you know, definition for this problem. How might we make students feel that the waiting time is not that long? Maybe you can change the problem like this and they, they come up with the, okay, put in the mirror makes you know, students feel that you know, they try to look at the mirror and they have no sense of the time spending for the waiting. So this is one of the examples. So maybe you guys have many other examples. But this time, uh, you're trying to define a problem of healthcare with a concept of life logging. 
So problem definition of healthcare, reframe and redefine your own problem of, of your team. How might we blah blah blah. Okay? And first, what I want you to do first is to list up what's in the box about the lifetime life logging healthcare. What are out there? Conventional things you, you can think of. Just list up items, factors, or elements you think of about the healthcare with the concept of life logging. And what are there on the market? Any conventional elements? Just list up using the whiteboard paper and sticker notes, sticking notes. Okay? Using the uh, whiteboard pens. And this is for 15 minutes. And if you have any questions, please ask us. I mean, there are TAs and we're here. Okay? So what's there, out there, about the healthcare? What can you think of? Anything? Just list up. Okay. Not only the problem, just you know, what are, are there on the market, maybe the, uh, the service or products, any elements, any factors, anything. No, it doesn't have to be a problem or solution, but try to think, uh, try to write down whatever you think. And after this work, we're going to work on the problem definition. This is not the problem definition phase right now. Just list up. Yes, not, not, the, not only the problem. Maybe anything you can think of. Okay, 15 minutes. <laughs> So this is the preparation step for the problem definition. See what is the problem. Okay. Not only the problem definition. Problem finding the problem. Yes. Problem. Yes. Problem. Yes. Problem. Yes. Problem. So to prepare problem for the problem definition. Thing is, you don't have to go to the end yet. So anything, it's yeah. just the beginning. Items, factors, elements. You can stand up and then. <laughs> So life log means something to yeah, device, but the, the concept itself is to record your activities or your, your life. Anything to do with your life, recording. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, sometimes S SNS, those things are one of the yes, yes. life logging tools. So wait, 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 wait. If they have the you know, function to record, then it's, it's a life log. So keep the recording, keep recording your activity, life activity. 
living and oh, yeah. 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 I just put up some put up some examples like sleep disorders, dietary balance, nutritional supplements, obesity. Those are examples. So anything to do with the healthcare like Okay. And it doesn't have to be strict. We can read easier. It has to do with the healthcare, but not strictly with the life okay. Anything about health? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please use sticky notes. Yeah, post-it notes. Yes, for the next activity, we need post-it. <laughs> Like, 
method is very common and you have all, all of you have done some kind of two by two matrix work but uh, I'll do some, some explanation about this activity this method is to visualize qualitative and quantitative factors so it doesn't have to be you know quantitative but sometimes you can visualize qualitative things using this tool and the steps one, number one is draw two, draw two arrows, of course, to make it two by two. And define axis, define the index for each axis. And plot the ideas or what you have done, just, you know, come up with. This is it. And find insight, analyze and find insights. And this is the example of Kellogg cereals. You know Kellogg cereals, right? And have you ever seen this example? This is a very famous example from, um, I think it's from Stanford University, D school. They use um, this explanation often. And they plot the Kellogg um, the marketing people plot their products into this two by two matrix with healthy and unhealthy child and adult access. This, right? And what can you find out of this? It's really obvious, right? <laughs> There's some empty space here. So, how do you get into this market? This is uh, the you know re usual idea. How do you get into this market? Maybe to um, manufacture new product for this market, right? That's the idea that comes to your mind first, right? But what they did was this. Their insight was every, even grown-ups want to eat sweet cereals that make them feel somehow guilty. This means that, this means that, why don't we, you know, just, not just, you know, making, introducing some new product into this market, but why don't we move these products into this market, right? So, some old people like, you know, sweet things, and maybe they will feel somehow guilty, and they, make these commercials. I'm 
The presidents are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. I eat them, I love them, and I don't care who knows. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, they have a taste that adults can love every bit as much as kids. Go ahead, Shirley, you can do it. I love them, thank you. <laughs> what more can you say? Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. <laughs> so, well, why do they, you know, hide their face? Feel guilty, right? <laughs> so they made, the Kellogg made a series of TV commercials like this. And they had a very good success. Okay, so this is one of the insights they got out of this, you know, two by two matrix. So it's your turn to do this using the what you have just listed on the whiteboard paper on your table. Create two by two matrix and plot what you have listed as the conventional items, elements, factors of healthcare on the chart. Okay? So Draw two lines, arrows, and then decide the index for the each axis, and then plot. Okay. And okay, uh, some example here. This is uh, one of the example we have done for other workshop. This is the theme was elect electric appliances for men's beauty. So these are the items or the products for the men's beauty. And they put this chart, two by two metrics, and plot them. Direct and indirect, <coughs> delayed effect and quick effect. And analyzing this, they found this insight. So many products here have handles. And here, only few products. And there's no product here. Why is it empty? So these are insights. And out of these insights, they can work on the next activity. So trying to find something in this space could be one of the activities. And trying to find why they have handles in this you know, space would be another activity. Okay? So this insight drives you the you know next activity. So it's your turn to do this, create two by two metrics using another um, sheet of paper. Yes, and plot what you have just listed. Okay, so I give you 30 minutes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. At the beginning, you have to define axis, and then you transfer one by one. Okay? But the definition of axis is extremely important. So maybe you, you use another seat. 
get to you is another thing. And define axis, then you transfer these items one by one. Okay, so please. And you use this, of course you use this. So one and the other. This one. Oh, of course you can use this. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, tengah-tengah.
opposite girl, but one innovative axis comes with boy and beautiful boy. <laughs> so, yeah, this is actually, uh, you know, came out of one uh, grown-up lady in the group work. So, boy and beautiful boy, when they were thinking about this, you know, men's um, uh, manif uh, electric device for the men's beauty. So for her, all the men are boy or beautiful. <laughs> Not all boy. <laughs> okay, so try out, try out innovative access. And these are some tips for uh, coming up with the innovative access. So beautiful and cute, how did it come out? So usually, good looking is the opposite to the bad looking. So if good-looking, one of the good-looking is a beautiful, and another one of the good-looking is cute. So this is something to do with the breaking down the segment of look, good-looking. So it doesn't always have to be the, the opposite way, but using this dimension, you can break down, when you break down, you can have the, this set of houses. Okay? So beautiful and cute are the same layer of this looking thing. But if you cut one layer and breaking down the segment, then you have you come with, come out with the, so many different items. Okay? So not only the opposite, but try to think about the innovative aspects. Because the reason for doing this is to to innovative thinking because you want to have the innovative solution and you know the logical very usual um, axis everybody comes up with those things and then when you try to find some insight out of the same output then everybody comes with the same insights findings right but you have to find your own original insight. So you have to be innovative. Out of the innovative you know, um, output, then you can find out some innovative insights. That's why you better do, uh, have the set of innovative indexes for the axis, for two by two. And try to find innovative insight. Okay, so uh, we have 15 minutes more to that. So please think about innovative access and creative access. <laughs>
your own problems to finish Okay? So maybe try to discuss about the, you know, your own problem definition. <laughs> and please remember that it must be interesting problem. So ordinary problem or interesting problem? What, when you come up with some kind of, you know, how about doing something question and try to think, is it ordinary problem or interesting problem? Because ordinary problem, if you have ordinary problem, the output is ordinary solution. So if you come up with the interesting problem, then usually interesting solution will come up. Okay? So we're gonna have a 15 minutes break for snack. I don't know. <laughs> Not lunch. So maybe you guys can discuss about the problem definition. Okay. Find problem of your own team. Team, your team's own problem definition, okay? For the healthcare, something to do with the life logging. Okay, so redefined, reframed problem healthcare, using that in insight out of the two by two output, and put it in a sentence, like how might we blah blah blah. Okay, so make a question. In the form of question, it's a, it's going to be your own predefined or reframed problem. Okay? So I give you 20 minutes. And once you write down the question, how might we something? Try to think, is it ordinary or interesting? The question is, okay? So try to make an interesting question.
You are blue. 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 You Get smaller focus on something else or what? At this moment, not so. You don't have to think about it. Not so precise or very specific. But innovate. Try to find Which means it should be a very small but then. Okay, for example, improved reader is everybody's common issue. Not your group, but other one, other, other people can think about how to improve the readership skills. So, for me, it seems very calm. This means not so. This is just this. Instantly. So, check this one. And just only your group is generating. This must be in the Okay? Okay? Yes. Thank you. 
Any volunteer? Any volunteer? Who wants to share? Who wants to share your programming definition? You can start, okay. <laughs> no, we don't have time for everyone, every team, but okay, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, my group, I mean, I, I read everyone's definition. It's very interesting and I can see that everyone has got something different to give us. Some on management, some on pollution, some on hazards, some on daily life, constipation and all. And we had uh, something very common, I think. It's more of um, health, exercise and food. So we were going on a common man basis, not much of uh, engineering or scientific nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where problems like we even have to take it out because I had it last week, so that sort of thing. Um, what we face every day, and then we ended up with um, we had a several run through for which axis to choose, and we finally decided on fit to fat. So fit is exercise, and uh, fat is basically not exercising and more on food and then we divided it into habit and also motivation why habit is because we felt like if it is a habit you're happy to do it and it's effortless but when it's a motivation um, we frown to do it and it's, it needs some uh, effort from us so uh, which is why we uh, we think this is something different so I'm not sure how different it is so it's motivation and habit so when we organized it, we do have some that overlaps both the fitness and the food. And somehow you can see that we have an obvious empty space here where we want to be happy with our food. <laughs> so then we came to a problem definition, which is how, to, how might we make people addicted to healthy food? Why addicted? We feel like if you're addicted, if it is your habit, you're happy to do it. It's not that we don't have healthy food, it's just that it requires effort. So that's our problem definition based on our outcome. Thank you. So the problem definition is how to, how about we make people addicted to healthy food. And I really like the part addicted to. Because first they, they put like, right? How do how do you make people like healthy food? But make people like it and make people addicted to it is very, very different, right? So I really like the, the concept of having been addicted to make it make people addicted to. Okay, thank you very much. And one another volunteer? Problem definition? Definition volunteer. or dietary uh, of your, your diet ha habit and also the physical exercise uh, of a person. So from here, um, we have come up with a, um, our uh, attempt to have innovative way of looking at uh, things and <coughs> we have categorized um, um, the, the new axis. One is conventional way, uh, another uh, axis is uh, another point here is innovative way. Uh, versus uh, the difficulty of those activities, whether it's easy or difficulties. 
So we have uh, some um, um, the technology involved in how to make uh, the activities easy, but at the same time uh, is uh, uh, fine or uh, 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 innovative. And the problem um, statement here, uh, we are not that confident with the problem and redefine problems. Um, people are lazy to do healthy uh, activities and our redefined problem is how might we make people feel that healthy activities uh, are easy and uh, fine. Uh, I, I guess that's all for my team. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Strong definition too. Yeah. So, so how to make the yeah feel is the point. Right? Yeah, feel is the point. Yeah, really interesting. So how might we make people, you know, um, make make um, people do healthy activities? It's usual, right? I have a suggestion. If we can use a video game, Nintendo Wii Fit, <laughs> so we can play games and actually uh, do some uh, uh, yeah, exercises at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> so make people, you know, healthy activities, but not not make just to make people do it, but feel feel. Yeah, yeah. it's easy, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Okay, so you guys came up with an interesting problem. Okay, so I think it, this is really... Okay, so time to share. So now we are going to talk about new value creation. And this is what uh, Yoki Sensei has explained. The KOH program is all about new value creation. So innovative thinking and entrepreneurship, these mindset enables new value creation. And so when the value is to be considered, many people would think of money, right? and bank account. But what is value? Value could be like he explained about the, this you know, bandage. It could be a very important value for those who need transplant of marrow, right? So it doesn't do anything to do with the money. And also Wikipedia is a free service, but I think everybody feels value out of this every day. Most of the people use this because it's valuable, right? And also there are so many, you know, uh, new websites for cloud funding. So these are new values, not just money. So value is something to be perceived by customers. Even if you have the but value to provide to customers, it must be perceived by users. <coughs> Once they are perceived by the users, it is value, right? So value is always defined by those who use and or pay for it. So what is the benefit to a specific person or customer? So this defines the perceived value. And value is something like someone's benefit, gain, joy, satisfaction, pain relief, help, excitement, peace of mind, etc. So these things, very you know, personal things, are the value, perceived value by the you know, users or payers. So now the activity, next activity is to explore the values. What values to be delivered? So in your problem definition, what kind of values should be delivered to users or customers? And think about this, uh, this is an easy, uh, very simple framework to think about the value. 
it could be sometimes pain relievers and sometimes gain creators. You can divide the values into very simple this framework. So in case of personal mobility, pain relievers, one of the values is much less strain on legs to, for users. And gain creators, one of the gain creating value is exhilarated feeling. Personal mobility is something you, you know, use for the, you move around by yourself. I mean, not just the uh, automobile in a car, but very personal, just for one person. So these are the values. So um, regarding your own Defini defined problem, redefined or reframed problem, please describe value proposition. What are the important values to be delivered in order to solve your defined problem? And who will receive what kind of value in the form of this? So you guys uh, have another sheet of paper and draw some chart like this and list up important pain relievers and gain creators to be delivered and state who will receive those values. So this column is for stakeholders and these columns for values, pain relievers, gain creators. Okay, so you don't have to uh, fill all the space but w w wherever you can think of, you just fill the space. Okay? So, uh, I saw that you, your team uh, have come up with already a solution out of the you know, problem definition, right? And that's good. I think it, it is also good. But before that, you have to think about value. Okay? So, what, otherwise, if you jump to the solution, if the solution does not work, then you have to start again. But if you have some certain value, you know, you've found this value is necessary to solve this problem, then you can change the, you know, the, the solution using this value. Okay? So before jumping to the solution, think about the value is very important, okay? So, um, okay, these are the examples. Uh, do you know this service? Square, square. This is the a credit card service. Usually, um, in small shops, they don't, um, Yeah, they, 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 they don't use the credit card because it costs a lot, right? And it's, uh, have, it must be something to do with a very um, complicated registration to the you know, credit card company. But this service makes this. Start accepting credit cards today. It's very easy using the I, uh, you know, iPhone and some kind of device here and you can use the credit card and you, you can have your clients, customers to pay with the credit card very easily. So the value proposition for this service is start accepting credit cards today. Very simple. And do you know this service, Evernote? Evernote, you use it, right? Yeah. And value proposition here is remember everything. Very simple, right? So in these cases, these in uh, the you know, catch copy, it could be the value proposition can be catch copy for the you know advertising, but sometimes it can be like that. So the value proposition in for your problem definition. Please make this chart in 20 minutes. Okay? So, this stop important pain relievers and gain creators.
to be delivered. And for who and what values. Okay? Okay, so 20 minutes.
So once you have come up with the value proposition, the important and essential value you think to solve the, your re redefined problem, you try to check it is if these tools are consistent to each other. And if it's not, you can change the problem definition. So this, you know, goes up and down. That makes iteration. So it doesn't have to be, you know, that once problem definition is defined, you cannot change. No, you can. If you have found a very important value proposition, then you can change the problem. And so these are the, this is one of the iteration issues. Very, very important in early phase for the concept of your solution to bring about the solution. On the, in the very early concept phase, you have to think so many times, so many do, you know, times for doing this kind of iteration. Thinking about the problem definition and then value proposition. And if it's not consistent to the problem definition, you can change the problem definition. You redefine the problem. Okay? Then the problem definition is decided. Then you try to think about the value proposition. Then something can be changed. So this iteration makes you know, refined values you're thinking of and very detailed you know, concept of your solution. Okay? So, once you have come up with a value proposition, then it's time to do more ideation, ideation phase using a tool, very common one, brainstorming. Okay, so, who have not done brainstorming? Oh, most of, I think most of you have done brainstorming, right? You know what it is, brainstorming. Okay, but I have to explain. Okay, brainstorming is a kind of free association measure. It's usually it's uh, used as an ideation tool, but it uh, really is an association. It's all about the association, free association measure. It means it is encouraged to build on the ideas of others. It's not to ideate one idea, to second idea, third idea, no. You have to build on others' ideas. Okay? So try not to think about good ideas, but just to, you know, something related to what is on the you know, sheet of paper, on the table, you can, you know, make, uh, you can write down and say it. Okay? You should write clearly and be vocal every time you place your post-it note so that others have more chance to build on your, your ideas. And go for quantity. Quantity is very, very important for brainstorming. So brainstorming mode is welcome wild crazy ideas and give every post-it note a short positive feedback. Uh, we're going to explain more about this. So brainstorming as a free association measure, when you do this, uh, this is you in a group. Actually, this is you. Brains. Okay? And free association is all about connecting your brains and make it associate. Okay? So, connecting your brain with others. This is the mode. And association, building on ideas of others means if one person says this, my idea, call me to keep you away. Then second person says green tea to keep you awake. 
And the third person says, energy dream to stay awake. So these are, you know, building ideas of others. These are associated. It could be like this. To do, by doing this, you expand the solution space. Okay? The main purpose for doing this brainstorming is to expand, explore the solution space. Okay, and also the uh, right clearly on the post-it note. And sometimes, you know, drawing works very well. And increase the chance to build on the other, on the ideas of others. Because if you write down in small, you know, letters, that your brains are not yet connected. It doesn't communicate to other members. So try to communicate and try to connect the, your brains with other members and go for quantity. Okay? And it says defer judgment and do not block the ideas. So feedback, when you, when you um, put some an idea on the paper, then try to give positive feedback. And do not, you know, judge. Try not to judge. But during the <coughs> brainstorming session, it says defer means if you want to, you know, judge that then, you can do it later. Okay? <laughs> so please do not block others' ideas while doing the brainstorming. Okay? Because it does not make a quantity of the ideas. Okay, so positive feedback. If someone, you know, puts some idea, then try to say nice or yes, cool, cool, <laughs> cool, yeah, I like it. Right? So this feedback is very, very important. When you put something on the, you know, on the table and someone says, oh, is it? <laughs> then, you know, you just want to go home, right? <laughs> so, uh, the, because the quantity is important, that's why, okay? So these are the rules. Go for quantity. Easy, try to uh, write down easy to understand. And positive feedback and build on the ideas of others so these are the basic rules and also there is one strategic uh, brainstorming tip clarify what you are brainstorming what you are brainstorming you have to know that is it a solution definition recognition and try to make sure what you are brainstorming about okay and also the question, based on question is very, very important. Ask the question that is suitable for brainstorming. Questions that diversity might help to answer. So it must be uh, easy to answer. Question must be easy to answer. If the question is very difficult to understand, then you can't think of anything, right? So easy to, simple and easy to everyone. And questions that are interesting to expand the solution space. And questions that logical or critical thinking would not provide an innovation question, solution. So not too logical, not too critical thinking. So how might we blah, blah, blah. Those questions are good questions. Okay. So try to go out of the box. All right. So the brainstorming. First, you have to think of what the question for the brainstorming. The brainstorming question. For example, this is an example. This is an actual example when we thought about the new communication device. 
One example is how might we communicate face to face without a common language? This is different from how what is the what is the new idea for communication device? When you are asked to give some idea for new communication device, any new kind new communication device, can you answer easily? It's difficult, right? So try to have the answer or the questions that are easy to answer. So these, this question is much easier for everyone to think of. Okay, so face to face without a common language. And these are the examples of ideas, hand gestures, body gestures, facial expressions, dance moves, drawing diagrams, drawing pictures, Mimicking insect motions and sounds, mimicking animal motions and sound. So these, you know, ideas are associated and built on other ideas. Can you see it, right? So this is the example. So this is the idea. So discuss, please discuss and come up with the brainstorm question to explore the solution space for your own stated value proposition. It's difficult, I know. It's difficult. But please, please discuss. Okay, and have a brainstorming question and then do the brainstorming. Okay? And while you're doing the brainstorming session, you think of, you know, maybe this question is not good. Then you can change. You can improve the question. Maybe if you put the question this way, then, you know, more ideas going to come out. Then just change. Okay? So, first, brainstorming question. How might we blah, blah, blah? And then do the brainstorming for 20 minutes. Okay? So value proposition you have now found. And to provide the value, what is the solution? What kind of solution can you think of? So now solution. Okay? First think of value and then solution. It could be, you know, many Okay. Yeah, the same thing. So many. Yes. Okay, 20 minutes. definition. <laughs> Thank you. 
จะเดี๋ยวแชทแชทบ็กซ้ายแชทแชทเดี๋ยวมาการบัตรกูยังกูกูยังกูยังกูยังกูยังกูยังกูยังกูยังWorkshop. So I ask you to pick one. Okay. Five minutes. 
brainstorming output. Have you? Okay. So that's all about the workshop session for today. It's over 5 p.m. Actually, 5.14 right now. And I'm going to ask you, uh, was it fun? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> you enjoyed? Yes. Good. But I know that it, is, it must have been very difficult for you to. Very difficult. Because, yeah, very challenging because you have to use the brain that you do not use a lot usually. <laughs> and it's really highly conceptual and you know highly abstract things you have to think about a lot. But that means a lot. It's a very important way of thinking. It, it's, you can think of it, this workshop is innovative thinking and it's a combination of analytical thinking and synthetical thinking all together, combined all together, right? So not only the analytical thing, but sometimes you have to analyze, but you have to, sometimes you have to think of synthesis too, using the design thinking. Okay, and this kind of thing, way of thinking is taught at more and more engineering and business schools all over the world, as I said before. So, um, I know it's difficult, but this kind of way of thinking is, is we usually say, it, innovating thinking as a habit. Once you get into a habit of doing this, it's easy for you to do this. So, try to have this mindset. And all the work we have done today to, is to nurture and cultivate this kind of mindset. Okay? So let's uh, think, let's review what we have done today. We have done marshmallow challenge first for cultivating innovative mindset. Okay? And also we did two by two metrics and try to find the problem definition and value proposition of your own team. And brainstorming to explore the solution space and found, you know, just picked up one idea for this as a solution. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to do this part, architect and business synthesis, using the output of today. So you're going to be in the same group tomorrow. And for tomorrow, uh, yeah, it's, hide, it's hidden, but it says homework. It says homework. <laughs> Finding something innovative and share. So we're going to do this tomorrow morning. So please um, think of something innovative. Something innovative, anything you find innovative. Find innovative solution. It could be product, service, policy, strategy, or any other type of solution. You can Google, you know, searching on the internet. And please um, concisely describe why you think it is innovative. Okay? This is very important. Why you think it's innovative. And you're going to share. Uh, I asked some volunteers to do the presentation. Something that has changed or will change people's perspective. This kind of, this is the you know, idea of the innovative thing. You, you find. Okay? So this is one example. This is, uh, have you ever seen this? This is the electric outlet but has the extension itself, extension cord itself. Usually the electric outlet is like this and if you want to extend this, you need this extension cord to you know, connect to the, your PC. But this one, you don't need to have this it extends towards your PC. Okay, so th this, this is just one example. Okay, so, um, Ryoki Sensei, can you, yeah, for tomorrow? Yes.
Okay, how about today? You have changed? You have realized you have changed? Yes. Okay? Yeah. Just one day. Dramatically changed, I believe. And tomorrow, you should expect what should more change. Yes. So before closing today's workshop, uh, we take just a few minutes to introduce how does experience in Japan just a few minutes. And also I would like to explain tomorrow's interview. Okay, so how that is come to here. And also the last item we should do is let's take picture together or as a closing of day one. Okay? Okay, please how that. Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> okay, my name is Powder, as you know, and I am the participant of last year. And okay, first of all, I would like to know who have been to Japan before. Is anyone? No. Okay. Do you like Japan? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, Japan is very. It's, I think for me it's very interesting country and a lot of things to discover and uh, I feel that okay I feel that okay some people like it really like it some people still doubt what is Japan and maybe well what I experienced from Masia my friend um, maybe some Muslim um, scare or well, not scare like aware of the food like I feel like oh it's very difficult to go to Japan and how could I live in Japan? So I just wanna say that don't worry about that. Okay? You can find a lot of food. Yeah, a lot of food that no pork and no uh, alcohol. You, you can eat sushi. You can eat fresh raw food. And it's very delicious. Okay, so and also the sochoyu you have to bring on your own. But other than that, it's very good. Okay. And the things that you do today, you did today. You might not think like, okay, because last year when I did the workshop, and all the senseis, senseis meeting with the teacher. So sensei said, oh, have you, have you changed? And actually, I feel no. I don't feel any change. Well, maybe you think of that too. So it's not suddenly change, but when you have practice, practice every day, every day, you will feel, oh yeah, it's help, it's good, and you will, you will turn it to be your habit of thinking, oh maybe bigger, like wider, like sometimes when I work on my own, from my own experience, when I work, I will go on detail. Ah, oh, this is a problem. Said, okay, what can I do on this problem? I will just go right to the problem. But after uh, we practice about this, we will think, ah, oh, this is a problem. So what can we fix this in another way? Think of something else. Think of like like you did this morning. Yeah, you did this morning, and you feel, ah, oh, this is a problem and then you stick the note, and then you classify it. Okay, hmm, this is the root, like another gap that we should go, or uh, okay, this is a new idea that we can do. So I think uh, this method that we are trying, we are practicing, it's very good for your future. It might not, um, well, you might not be coming an ice dive. Okay, you might not be that all oh, like genius people, but this is the way to improve your thinking system, to be more innovative. Because somebody, I know that everyone are innovative people, or you are an innovator, but you will be more, more than that. Because you have some other um, aspect that you can think, yeah, you will think something else and you will get used to using these positive notes 
at, yeah, at first, I like, oh, post-it note, what is it? Like, we not usually use it. We just write it on the paper. I don't know, my, my experience will write on the paper. But when you're practicing, oh, it's good, it's easy. You can just stick and then uh, remove it easily. So I think it's a, good, it's a good idea to use this in your daily life. And also, right now on my table, I use a lot of post-it notes. But just remind me something. Just post, post, post it. So I think it's a very good experience. And um, do you have any questions or anything that you will feel uncomfortable with this? Or like some someone, I, I know that someone already sent a CV. But you might have some questions like what will you um, experience in the workshop or you feel scared of something? Is there anything that come up in your mind? Yes. Well, another thing that you, you, you have experiences which I really like is you have, um, you will meet other people other friends from another country, which will broaden your idea. They will think something that you might not have think about this before. Like, okay, because you're in the same country, you familiar with something, the same thing. Ah, let's say like healthcare. You might think, this is not good. Maybe this one is but too colorful. Yeah, maybe. But in your friends from another country may think, oh, this is so good. Yeah, you better do this, that. You know, like we are brainstorming like you did today. <laughs> and maybe some fight might happen, but not really a big fight. And we're like, ah, this is better. And somebody will say, this is better. So we debate. This is a fun part that I found so in the your workshop. group, your team was combined. With the um, my team mix. combined with um, me, Thai, Brazilian, and Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. So we're from different countries, yes. and it's very amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Brazilian, like from like South America, yeah, yeah and right. Japan is totally different, different. culture. Extreme. Yeah, extreme. and Thailand, like what what will be in. <laughs> in the middle, <laughs> we have to fight yeah. for our idea yeah. as well. And then, okay, some idea, well, when we um, listen to other ideas from other people, we, okay, yeah, I understand. And we try to understand and then we develop the ideas together. So this is the fun part that I found. Mm -hmm. So if you are the one who selected to be there, you find something very, very awesome. Yeah, and you will come back with, wow. Yeah, oh, oh, or like, yeah. oh my God. And final, finally, um, we, I found my new family too. Like, I found my mom, my dad, <laughs> my uncle, <laughs> my parents. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, uh, they are very warm, welcome and very helpful for you. So you don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, everyone are very friendly. And also the TA and the friends from KO, they are very supportive. So don't worry about that. So any questions? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, again, we and Powder strongly recommend you to submit CVs. If you didn't, you haven't submitted, or, uh, of course, if you are interested in visit Japan. So, now let me introduce how to conduct the tomorrow's interview. Okay? So, after the morning session, Tomorrow's morning session, we will announce a few students or a few uh, participants who will undergo the interview. Okay? And 
Also, if you haven't submitted the CV yet, you can submit today. And we will wait for 8 o'clock in the evening. Please send email to these two address. We can see in the midnight tonight. And we will interview just after the tomorrow morning, tomorrow's morning sessions. So starting from 12 o'clock, you will be provided the lunch as usual. So you are taking lunch, but we will do the interview for individual candidates. Okay? This is a, a process of how to do our interview. Okay? So that's all for our comment of today's. So again, thank you for joining today's workshop. And last thing is, do you remember? We should take pictures. Okay? So that's all. Thank you very much. So, uh, first I want to ask you, um, who has submitted as a candidate for HKO Edge program? Okay. Who has applied for the candidates? Could you raise your hands to make sure that we can really see who are uh, A little bit higher? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I would like to talk a little bit about <laughs> a little bit about the this KOH Pro. We have a larger perspective. Okay, it's a three-year program funded by Ministry of Education in Japan. It's a governmental program. And first year, we got participants. And actually, the second year, we did last uh, September. Some of the participants of the first year recruited the participants. Okay, so this is it has th these people has become online and then they have become online online too. And when they participated, they became online, and then they also are going to be instructors or mentors, like you know the TAs for next year's program. So, and then they are going to recruit. So if you, if you are going to participate in this program, then you are going to recruit the next year's you know, students, participants. So in this way, um, we would like to keep our online community stay very, very close. And also I would like to ask you, so I would like, that, I like to ask you to come back as alumni and sometimes TAs or sometimes if you have succeeded in some you know, business and as angels. <laughs> okay, so alumni's recommendation for new participants is more than welcome. So we always ask the alumni people to you know, um, have any suggestion who are going to be a good you know, participant for next year. Okay, so this is what we call KOH ecosystem. All right, and actually we have more than 10, 100 active friends. So many people have already participated and they have become, you know, these kind. In this way, all that. Okay, so this is the, you know, big picture of our long-term perspective program. Okay, so we're going to start. Uh, homework. <laughs> have you? Have you
you done? <laughs> so I, I would like to ask you any volunteers. I would like to have uh, one or two participants to presentation about. Yeah, talking. If you have prepared any slides, it's okay. But you don't have to. Don't have to. This is very impromptu, but this is something that I've seen on Facebook. Uh, it's about it's something that has changed or will change people's perspective. It's about the container house. I'm sure a lot of you would have heard of it because it's not completely a new concept. So someone has said that uh, housing price. I mean, especially in my age, when I want to get a house, it's costing me half a million, and I can't afford it. So this person came up with this idea where he said the container only cost about uh, the the ship container the big ones. Yeah, it only cost about thirty thousand, and then he builds up on it, and he can get a double decker. So we all know that he can actually build up on the house to get few stories as he wishes with the the, the size of a container. Yeah, but what was innovative that really gave me a perspective is that these containers you can actually carry them with you. And then uh, it's actually like all in, and the engineering part is that when you actually place it somewhere where you want to camp or you want to stay, it will open up. It will open up and then it will cater us during the winter and also summer, especially when you are traveling. And then you can actually, it's a fully functional home where you can actually carry with you uh, in a bandwagon or something. So I found that innovative, which means to say like, I mean, we have been complaining that the prices are expensive and so on, but then I think with merely about less than 50,000, we can actually get something and we can even bring it wherever we want to. So I, I found that a different perspective. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, what is the most innovative point? Uh, the point that it's interchangeable for different weather. Oh, the house for the weather. For the weather. Ah. When it's very cold, then it's a, it will change in such a way that it gives you warmth. When it's warm, you. <laughs> when it's warm, then it's all glasses, so you get all nice sunlight yeah. and sceneries and so on. So I thought that was very important. Yeah, thank you. And I found in you know, several innovative points that that's the one. Mm -hmm. And also, also, the, what, another point is mobile house, yeah. right? It's yeah. mobile. <laughs> the house is usually fixed, yes. but it's mobile. And the third one is much less expensive, right? Yeah. Okay, so that has a many, several you know, viewpoints for innovativeness. Okay, thank you very much. And one another volunteer? Good morning. Uh, what I heard, I think I read about that last week, is not as big and <laughs> convenient as what you said. It's very really small, but I think in long term it's useful. Because it was talking about the we all when using the like now currently everyone is drinking tea or coffee and we are waiting to be cooled down. So there's some energy going out. What they did, they innovate, uh, they change it in a way that we can use it to, ch uh, to charge our phone. Uh, while we are waiting for the tea or coffee or whatever we have in the mug to cool down, we can use its energy to charge our phone. So I found this very interesting, <laughs> especially in terms of energy saving. Yeah. I think somewhere in Australia, in one university in Australia, they did this. Especially when energy battery is so popular. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and tea and coffee are available everywhere. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I like yeah. it. Okay, thank you very much. I think the, the generating energy can come from anywhere. Like, you know, the sound can generate energy and this, this kind of movement yeah, can generate energy. So, so that's the one aspect of generating energy out of the, you know, the energy coming out from the drink to be heated, to be cooled down, right? Okay, that's a very interesting one.
Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, so I, I know that everyone everyone has your own innovative findings, right? <laughs> but today, uh, sorry, we do not have you know, much time to you know introduce everyone's. So I'm going to go on with the you know workshop. Okay, the second. So what we have now is the selected, you know, uh, the picked up idea. One idea you all of the teams have just picked up yesterday, the, the, the last part. And using that, the first one is to do this. This part, architect and business synthesis. We're going to use a method called CBCA, like you said, CBCA. <laughs> Customer value chain analysis. Okay, this is the abbreviation for customer value chain analysis, and it expresses the value chain viewpoint and stakeholders and their values. So, first, I'm going to explain about this method. CBCA can clarify who are the stakeholders, who are the stakeholders, and how does the value flow? We talked and discussed a lot about values yesterday, right? So we need to today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the how those values flow between the stakeholders, and how does material or energy flow? Material and energy are really one of values. And how does information flow? And who are you designing for? Who are the most important stakeholders in your system, in your business model? And who are your important customers? Who are the customers? And it looks like this. It looks like this. This is an example of um, HP is Hewlett Packard a manufacturer for electrocardiographic monitor. So this is the steps to draw this diagram. First step is to identify important stakeholders. Users, payers, people around users, business partners, authority, etc. So we discussed about the, the value and who are the values for, so stakeholders, right? So maybe you can take a look at what you have done yesterday, and that will be you know, make it easy for you to do this work. And in this example, stakeholders are, one of them is HP, Hewlett Packard, the manufacturer of the device, and doctor and a patient with heart disease. This is uh, the, the, the device is the cardiographic monitor. So the patient, it has a heart disease. It doesn't look like heart disease for patient, but <laughs> suppose that he has a heart disease. Okay. And in this CBCA, Hewlett Packers, they want to sell this this device, cardiographic monitor, to doctor with some you know other peripheral devices like computers or printers to doctor, and doctor pays for it. So identify value flow between stakeholders is the second step, and write down dollar mark for money or capital and icons for product, services, and information. And exclamation mark for claims or regulations. So these are basic rules. And a doctor is going to give the patient to let them use this cardiographic monitor. And the patient is going to give the information about his disease so that he can diagnose this patient's situation much easier. And maybe the doctor is going to give feedback to the manufacturer. So these flows will be generated among these stakeholders. 
okay? And then perform analysis. Who is important customers? Try to think about the important customers. Trace dollar, this mark, and this mark. And please anal analyze value balance. Take a look at the input and output. Is it balanced or not? And try to find any negative effect out of this diagram. So in this case, if you take a look at this, the whole picture, you can say that the money just goes out from this person, this whole stakeholder. So he would say, my money just goes out. I'm not gaining much, right? And this, so far, it's been analysis. And it's time to do synthesis. Why don't you have insurance company to support his expense? And then in order to do that, we would need government to give permission to do this. Right? So this kind of synthesis you can think of. You can expand. So this is the what we call CBCA. Okay, you got the idea. Okay, so your turn. Out of the picked idea you just picked yesterday, please discuss about a business model and create CBCA. So what you are going to do is to um, create a, a service or device for the healthcare logging device, live logging device or service. And it's new and it's innovative. Okay, so consider the values that are not only money and goods or services. So goods or, goods or services, maybe I have not seen a detail, details of the values you have just described yesterday, but try not to think only in money and goods as values. There are some more values. Okay, so try to think about many kinds of values and stakeholders for your business book model. And like you know, you have just described yesterday, and it should be changed. Yeah, it can, it can be changed. Okay, we're going to spend 30 minutes for this. <coughs> so first step is to this, uh, try to define, identify the stakeholders and values, how they change, how they flow, and okay, I'll like now explain about this. So the values. This, if you take a look at this, this whole picture, it could, you could say that this is value chain, but it could be supply chain, right? So because this is the, the flow of goods and services and money, but if you take a look at this, you could say that values are not always tangible. And there are some intangible values, like this. If you say it's a supply chain, this is the CVCA for um, dad went to Japan and he bought some souvenir shop, souvenir for his family at a souvenir shop in Tokyo. This is a CVCA for this. And if it, this is a supply chain, it just ends with dad and souvenir shop in Tokyo and dollars and this goods. This is it. This is a supply chain. <coughs> but you have much more values that will generate 
this flow, which means that dad, when, they, when the dad comes home, he is going to give this souvenir to mom, and she would say, oh, so you went to Japan, and this kind of conversation was, will be generated. And this is a value for these people, intangible, right? And the dad is going to give the souvenir to daughter. So this is uh, actually origami. Do you know origami? Mm -hmm. Origami. And we call it chiyogami. It's a, a, there are uh, some you know, origami. Those have very beautiful patterns. Japanese, you know, like kimono. Very beautiful patterns on it. And the higat of chiyogami. And so the daughter would say, Daddy, what is chiyogami? And he's going to explain about this. So this conversation will be generated. And mom gives this, you know, origami is you, you fold it and make, this is a crane out of origami. And mom would make a crane out of this chiyogami. And she would give it to her, to her daughter. And she would say, mom, this is great. How do you make it? So this new conversation and you know interaction, communication will be generated. So this kind of values are very, very important. And this is what it would generate, this value flow. Right? So try to think what would generate the flow of the values. There must be some intangible values behind it. And if you find those values, please expand with the new you know, stakeholders and new value flows. Okay? You got the idea? Okay. So this is what you're going to do. So, okay. Let's start. 30 minutes. Thank you. 
けて家で起動してるのかけて家で起動してるのかけて家で起動してるのヘッドホンをつけないのが遊んでしまう。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>
員会議
So who's going to first? Which go? Which team is going to be first? Uh, oh, the two volunteers there. <laughs>
And your problem definition was, I remember that, how to make, how might we make people feel, feel that like healthy activities are easy and fun. <laughs> so do you think that your system helps to solve this yeah, problem? Yeah, but it's likely you watch TV, then you generate it, then yeah. <laughs> yes, right. that makes you feel. Yeah. You yeah. won't realize that you've been cycling yes. all the time. Because if this is not for your own fit, uh, not for your fitness, mm -hmm. but for the, the earth. Yes. Right. Yes. So that point is that the kind of you know, synthesis happens, right? Yeah, this is very good. Yes. Okay, so what do you think is the most important value out of this value flow? Um, and which one do you think, if this value doesn't flow, this whole system doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Is there anything like this? Uh, you mean one, one value that yeah. collapsed the whole system? Yes, yes, yes. I think this value, the, the, the connection between the stakeholder and the, the provider, right, right. without the equipment and right. the synthetic group. Right, right. So, I think this whole picture is very good and looks very good. But try to think that what is the, the real want for the customers to do, actually do this, to buy this device or to do this activity. So that this kind of thing you, you have to think next step, step, step right? So, so did you, did you uh, think of anything about the next activity? Um, Maybe, maybe how can we uh, uh, create awareness? Because you need to be aware of your problem before you can do something about your problem. <coughs> maybe my team can uh, discuss on that um, in the next meeting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, your group is scientists, right? Scientists. 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 So please tell your team name first, okay? So scientists for that up. And then? Oh, hi. Good morning. This is the name of our group. We call it Gambole. Gambole because um, actually this is a combination of Gambate and uh, Bole. Bole in Malay, so it's Gambole. It's, yeah. Oh, Bole in Malay means um, we can. can. We can. can. Sorry, no. Yeah, we can do it. So, yeah. Have you heard like Malaysia Bole? Oh, no. We in Malaysia, Malaysian, we can do things. So, yeah. Just anything, not necessarily, not necessarily good things. Um, so, uh, a bit on our products, actually. Um, we are, our idea is we want to make um, a helmet. Um, imagine a moto motorcycle helmet. So, it's a bit like, uh, yeah, it's a helmet, except it's um, something like, um, we call it Kelomet because it's designed like a pedal helmet. So it's supposed to be like a regular helmet, except we can, it has, um, you can open it like, like that, you know, like, sorry. So it's like, um, imagine this is a helmet, you use on your hand. This one, we can open it, open like, you know, um, it's unlike the usual helmet when you have to slot it in, but this one is like you open and then close. So our original intention of the product is, uh, is that it's for those who are concerned with their hair, so usually, you know, if you're like, you know, you, you take care of your hair and you, you wear your helmet and after that you arrive in the office and you ha your hair is already messed up. So, yeah, so we want to solve the, that problem. That was the first problem. And second that, uh, we have extra, actually, extra features of the product. For example, it has an airbag coming out, say, in case of accident. So the airbag pop out and then, you know, let's spine injury, for example. So, yeah, the main intention of the product is one we, we offer security, um, peace of mind to the user, I mean, to the stakeholder, of course. So, yeah, so these are our stakeholders. 
uh, yeah, OCBCA analysis. So yeah, first, um, our main customer is the, of course, the motorcyclist. So we offer them a safer product, a more comfortable product, because it's easy to use, and of course, innovation. So um, in return, the motorcyclists can give us feedbacks, and of course, profit and claims. And so, yeah, we have huge motorcyclist community in Malaysia. So especially those who cannot afford a car and don't want to go through the toll. So these people, when they know their friends, another motorcyclist friends, um, use the same product, so they, you know, they can exchange informations, and maybe they will also tell the same information. I mean, maybe good review of the product to those who never use the product. So it's a good kind of like information. At the same time, also um, they promote um, safer product. So because obviously, ah, oh, you know. Our product is much safer than the, the, the hopefully lah, hopefully safer than the regular product, the regular helmet. And in turn, um, less fatal accident, hopefully. And then yeah, so it offers peace of mind to the community. And as well, it will of course it will bring positive positive impact to the motor industry because usually in the motor industry, I mean especially in the community, they have negative perception by the, you know, by the old people, like, because they ride on the bike, not safe. So at least we have something in exchange, you know, you can, you can say like, oh, we have a good product. Uh, we are not that, I would say that we motorcyclists are also concerned about our safety, not just, you know, like that. So, uh, yeah, it helps to boost up sales in helmet. In, and then what else? Um, okay, a lot of, Things here, sorry, please bear with me. Um, yeah, patent agency, and then we can offer. Yeah, we, we of course we have to deal with them to register our patents, and we, in return we have our product more secured, our idea, and then of course we go to investors if the product has more market market potential. So and then oh, of course the authority also we have to inform the authority, and they will give us some recommendation maybe um, endorsement and then yeah we have certifi safety certification agency oh yes we can go to media as well so in, term, in, in, in order to promote safety on the road we can go to media and we have this one artist maybe then they, they promote this product and in return we, we are giving a community message to everyone that yeah we have to be safer on the bike with this helmet, of course. And then, oh yeah, these are our insights. Actually, um, yeah, we're thinking this, this is uh, the idea, the main idea is we want, uh, yeah, this helmet, we have foldable helmet, right? So it doesn't have to be um, on uh, forward for the motorcyclist because we have other things that requires you to wear a helmet. For example, cyclists. So maybe we implement the same idea on the product, except this one is for the cyclists, the regular cyclists. So it opens a new market. And then perhaps we can collaborate um, with another industries in order to um, prom um, improve our product. For example, we have a major industry. Say if you want to make a next generation of a product which is more durable, more, weight, more lightweight, so we can go with new material. And maybe we can make a special edition of the product. We can go to the design industry. So maybe maybe in Japan we have this hard beautiful style, I don't know. So they can make like a special edition, more flashy colored design. And yeah, we can go this far. We can go to fashion and industry as well. We make um, helmet more hip, fashionable. And yeah. I think that's it so far. I'm going to go more further. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So the helmet. Helmet. Is it flammable? Helmet. Yes. Flammable. It's flammable. It's going to be. Oh, flammable. You mean? Like. Oh. It's going to be a helmet. It's helmet. It's helmet. Yes. It's folded so the first. It's folded. It's folded. So I, I hope it can be a few picture, but we just have our imagination right now. Okay. 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 Okay
How do you carry it with here? Yes. How do you carry it first? How do you so? Um, for the storage, we use we, we we put it like the normal helmet. Although actually maybe with the design approval we can or press the design. But um, our main intention is we just want to make the the, the helmet easier to wear. So we open like that and close. Okay. So okay. Like that. So um, so have you have you ever heard of this model? Like no. no. <laughs> Close to it. Oh, really? Okay, that's good. Then. Which is, but I think that means your idea is good. Otherwise, we will get sued
So from the same you know, problem definition, they have found this. This is actually on the market right now. And this was generate, uh, invented and uh, generated by uh, some designers in, um, I think it's from Finland or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> Usually, you just you know, put it around your neck, around your neck, and when something happens, it, it you know, inflate, like it pops up as a helmet. So this idea, right? So which means you are getting closer to the right answer, right? <laughs> good, good. And also, even if this is uh, you know the conventional and available product or service or device, you, if you use this kind of tool, you can think of other possibility to extend the you know, system or some you know difficulties you can find. So I think it's a good you know um, good lesson for thinking about those if those things. Okay. So. Any other any comments from you? Uh, <laughs> Finding the same kind of products. <laughs> we could be the next competitor. <laughs> yeah, and one thing, very very expensive. Oh yeah, so it's a niche product. Okay. Yeah. So try maybe, to make it. maybe uh, finding a competitor is very good. So it it, yes. it helps us. I mean, motivates us to improve our product. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And exchange information. Yes, exchange yes. information. Okay. I have a slogan for them. Say stay, say say stay safe in style. with something interesting and we thought we should present it to you. Mm. Um, okay. uh, so what happens is that we, as usual, we come up with a... Not as usual, I'm sorry. Let me define. Our problem is about fit, uh, fat to fit. Yeah? So we want to provide food. Uh, we want to provide food to people so that they don't find it difficult to eat healthy. Right? So yesterday when we were doing the analysis, the analysis, we found out how to make people want to be addicted to our good food. We thought we should first make them feel guilty about the food itself, about eating unhealthy food. Then, uh, so we wanted to come up with a mobile app where we can actually connect to the customer. So the customer is actually an individual who's a willing individual because he must have a commitment that he wants to eat good food, wants to adapt uh, healthy habits. So, uh, so this person should connect to our service and then we will actually um, diagnose this person, get the uh, diet ready and, uh, and then we will monitor the food intake of this person. So this is the uh, service that we want to provide. So uh, this will affect uh, different, uh, different stakeholders. Do you want to add it? I want to give opportunity to <laughs> Basically how the system works is uh, the user or many indi um, individuals first they, okay, they decide I want to eat healthy food, I want to keep eating healthy food. So we want, we are the service provider to help them eat healthy food easily. So first they enroll in this mobile app, they get this mobile app and this app is connected to a food truck and the food truck, this is the service. So the first line of service is between the user, the apps, and the food truck provider. The, where does the food come from? It's from chef, dietitian, and a few grandmother who has insight into how to make food tasty. You, know, you, you, need, to, you need to couple the, the nutrition, the skills, and the traditional value of food. That's where people will want to eat. Healthy food that's healthy, uh, that's, that's yummy, that's yummy. Yeah. So um, between the food truck and the providers, the dietitian, chef, and the grandmothers, uh, they will provide the food. 
And with these apps, we we are also providing a health monitoring device like a bracelet or a wrist or wrist watch or smart watch or something like that that they can monitor their health, the BP, the um, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and um, calories intake. So when they order the food from the mobile app, we have they can record what food comes in to them and they because they have subscribed to it they can get the food uh, easily and regularly with the schedule so they don't need to order every day every day every day and the beauty of having an app is because an app you can have the share location function you can have the um, like function you can have the facebook you can have the trip advisor all these things it can be interconnected so the service can be easily adapted by other people and uh, they will also have an idea what's going on and people, other people will also want to use this service. Intangibly, when they have uh, had healthy food regularly, they will have uh, better finance, health, they become healthier, more confident, emotional stability, and intangibly they will affect the colleagues, the family, the employers, the workers. So. Because of, the, because of this, they have the food intake logging. So if something goes wrong with their health, when they go to see the doctor, they can show the doctor, this is what I eat. The doctor say, oh, so you had uh, very a lot of nasi lemak. That's why you are having this heart stroke or both. You know? So that's one value that we want to um, put in. Um, summarize it if you want to brag on it <laughs> okay the whole thing is that um, the intangible effect is that we actually come up with a healthy society happy environment so we have social problem now we want to be a, we want to have sustainability in our social uh, environment so we feel like once one individual is happy and that individual will actually impact on the society and the surrounding around them this this is a, this is the intangible effect that we are trying to talk about and that gives us a satisfaction and what the interesting part that I want to share is that if you can see stop war <laughs> what we're trying to say is that if you start eating healthy we believe we will stop funding some organizations that are making really really well and that fund actually goes to war so we we hope, we're not blaming anyone, we hope through healthy eating habit and when you're feeling guilty of very high calorie intakes that you take, you can even help stop war. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. And very nice drawing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I found that your problem definition is uh, how to make people addicted to healthy food. Right? So, how to, uh, the, the, the point to make addicted is to, which which point, which value makes that? You want to make them feel guilty of eating not healthy. When the food is good, they become addicted to it. And it's easy, it comes to their doorstep. Oh, so it comes to the doorstep. You don't have to think of, oh, I need to go to this shop to buy this food. Mm -hmm. so the, Every now and then, food will come. Bing, bing, so easiness like to get and it's good. It's yummy and it's good. And it's the it's easiness to get it. good food. Yeah, the reason is Healthy McDonald's food. and all these yes. deliveries are doing well. They, they have five calories. Mm -hmm. The reason is they come to the doorstep. Mm -hmm. So what if you give the ready so food to the doorstep? Mm -hmm. and then you make the right mm -hmm. option. Okay. okay. Okay, so that makes people addicted to it. Okay, thank you. And I, what I like uh, out of this you know, system is you really had the big picture and a very extended scope of your system. And it's very good, yes. Because if you think of one system, try to think of the outer environment and that would make some you know, negative effect to other outer environments. So it's, it's good to have a big picture. As a system, and also maybe you, you can think of a negative effect. If you do, do you find any uh, possibility to make cause negative effect out of the system? We can find some people who make energy. Oh, where they are facing traditional cooking. 
we have somehow changed the data, we can't be added after that. So then that would not be a bad experience. So that's why we have to monitor and we need to know if we want individual things. What I found, what I found is maybe you know the eating habit diet is a kind of a private thing. And some people don't want to, you know, have the private things, you know, seen by everyone, other like doctors. You have to you know, exchange those data, and you have to show what you eat. So that 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 that's true, right? We like to share. Yeah. So maybe one next step is to how to, you know, deal with this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, for Yes. Hello. Hi, good morning. Um, our team is Think. You know, the idea is Think. <laughs> okay, today, um, about CBCA. Okay, our stakeholder is uh, government, people, and the supplier. Okay, um, how might we make people love the public transport? Uh, we hate it, right? Uh, because uh, it is easier to use our own uh, transport, right? Okay. Uh, from what uh, we get is, uh, if you use uh, government, the supplier will provide the information and benefits to the government, and government will advertise uh, advertise all the all the goods to use public transport, and they will uh, provide maybe um, public transport and program such as apps to use uh, public transport and. Uh, advertise it to social media, maybe apps, Facebooking, uh, to make they love uh, to use public transport and they know that is uh, public transport is good. Uh, the impact is to people is uh, it will increase uh, productivity, time, money, and it is convenient. So uh, in Malaysia, there is uh, I think. There is no apps that uh, provide uh, information about buses, taxis, and train in one apps. Uh, maybe uh, just for train, there is apps uh, to buy it, to buy the train ticket. So I think we have to combine it, uh, all public transport, uh, and if we search uh, to go somewhere, and it will come out about. Uh, which public transport is much uh, good to use on that uh, to go that uh, places. So uh, for people, it will uh, divide into employers, employee, elders, disabled people, and students. If we provide more reliable, more reliable uh, public transport, it will uh, benefit all people and benefit government, which is um, if all people will uh, use the public transport, it will um, less traffic and improve our health, productivity, social economy and uh, social and economy. Like uh, using public transport, uh, we will save our money, right? Uh, then. Uh, for productivity, maybe in traffic we will have a stress, then uh, it will uh, decrease our productivity, then uh, so it will affect our job, that, uh, that's why uh, it will increase the productivity. And some more, it will help our environment, less pollution, uh, right? All people realize that public transport is good. Uh, it's benefit to all. So uh, people will support it, and all this kind of problem will solve. 
and we will provide a good society, health society, maybe. Uh, so the value is maybe uh, we will make the public transport more reliable by uh, providing public transport uh, more uh, reliable like uh, on time uh, apps maybe uh, apps to buy the just uh, using your phone all people have phone right so we can buy it and just uh, tap to the any uh, public transport and we can just go in so it's easier for us Thank you very much. You, so you, uh, you were thinking about the healthcare pro problem and in the aspect of transportation. Okay, very good. And by you know making people to use the public transportation, people will, will that will make people healthy. Okay, using app. Yes. Okay. Very good. And I. Actually, I know some of the, you know, uh, in Japan, we have many, you know, application for transportation to tell them how, how much time it would you know, take to this destination and which way you can uh, go fast or which way you can go without uh, so many changes, train, trains. So you can, you know, choose what you want fastness or you know easiness to go and what I thought looking at this is maybe you can there, there, there could be a choice one of the choices is to um, how you want to be healthy using the app and you want you just you know, pick up the healthy be, making me healthy choice then that will, that application will tell you which you know method, which way, yeah, to go within this amount of time? That would be you know, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you should you know make a suggestion to Japanese application software. System. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you. are from Super Ultimate Innovative System, Swiss. Oh, okay. Okay, so firstly, uh, okay, uh, I will go back to the reframe problem. The problem is uh, uh, that we get in how might we fully utilize resources. So, and then we finally uh, the, come to the, uh, the change uh, at VCBA. Okay, and then uh, this is, these are our stakeholders, patient, workers, staff, Investor, government, and auditors. So, well, uh, the thing is, we are trying to uh, answer the questions. So, I will give first, first to my fr uh, friends and then I will conclude everything. Okay. Uh, so, basically, our, uh, as uh, Isaac said, that we want to fully utilize resource to provide personal <laughs> health care without the need of supervision. As um, all of you have been to a hospital, right? And we need to wait like a long time until we our number uh come up. So instead of waiting, we can you know grab some breakfast or lunch or maybe do some other event. So we want to solve um, the waiting time, and then we also um, want to help the hospital in management. They can reduce the number of patients in the hospital that waiting their time to come up, and then we also want to increase the customer satisfaction. So what we will do is we, we will develop an app that will give the patient the information on which number is now is now on uh, who are meeting the doctors. So therefore the, the patient will um, instead of waiting they can go do some other errands and then when they 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 have they get the notification that their number is near and then they come and come back to the hospital and and then, uh, so um, the the patient will have like will 
will have satisfaction uh, with the services with the hospital and the workers also will and the staff will receive less complaint from the workers from the patient and then um, uh, the the patient will give more money to the hospital and in return the hospital will give the medicine and services to the patient and then the hospital will uh, you know like give money to the government like taxes when they have more money they, they pay more taxes and they also will like subscribe to our company to get the the apps. So, um, so uh, that's it. So the last one is the investor. The investor will, you know, like invest in our company to develop the apps, and in return they will get the profit and also some publicity. So for the inside, um, that's all. Okay. Uh, wait, can you guys just hear without this one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, I guess. The things that we are doing is like uh, we are for creating a company for this one. Just that this is who we are. Okay, we are trying to sell maybe the apps from the for the management uh, database system because right now the there's currently happening in the uh, healthcare uh, things is because the queue waiting time and then for the medicine is very hectic and then. Maybe we can provide uh, everything uh, with the new application, and then people, uh, maybe we can, uh, they can get the number. I mean, they know it. they are from the house. Okay, the waiting number is maybe two hundred something. Okay, so they can come at that time. Okay, I have uh, maybe at least five numbers more, so I can uh, get up uh, at certain time. Okay, so it's not that just uh, they don't have to queue for a long time. Okay, so. This is goes to interrelated to fully utilize for the government, <coughs> hospitals, workers, and absolutely I think the most important is about the patient because the patient is our strike <coughs> people. Okay, so uh, it can goes back to the house of community. Okay, and then what the inside that have been uh, that that all of us have been discussed is about the all the change the the things because all the process is interrelated. Okay, and second. Uh, we have to do something to sustain the system, flexibility. We have to do it. Okay, and then the other thing that really uh, with the healthcare is about we know uh, where is the resource of the problem. We, we know how to reduce the hospital management cost, isn't it? Okay. Other than that, if just in case the new value uncertainty happens, uh, maybe at that time the economy flux down. Uh, okay, and then uh, maybe uh, we can try to think how to improve and how to uh, uh, have a new things for that. Okay, and then it's about the public education is needed. It's kind of the uh, things, uh, maybe ways on how to improve, right? Okay, and then uh, the thing is database uh, center information. Okay, and then our, uh, the, just now the question is mentioned about the new stakeholders, isn't it? So the new stakeholders that have been found maybe from the insurance company, this is interrelated between the government and the hospital. Maybe you can provide the insurance uh, uh, to the patient. Uh, I mean, because usually right now patient is getting uh, people is getting the insurance by their own. Maybe we can provide it uh, connected with the with the government uh, from the private and then come back to the hospital. Okay. So uh, most of uh, everything just now that I can see is that it's about the education and the thing is about the high technology is needed to improve our quality of life. So basically, that's uh, what I can conclude. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting, because we, we all started as a, the same question at the first stage, but every team has the different, very totally different solution. Right? So it's very different. So you focus on the hospital. Yeah. And especially for the waiting time for the patient. Mm -hmm. And the waiting time for the patient is uh, one of the big problems in Japan too. And actually, there are some applications, I, I, I think, in, in Japan. Yeah, so um, I think your next step is to do research. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So for application, especially in the, these three yeah. teams, if you do. So device. So three of you have, you know, yeah. Oh yes, right. So especially for the application, you should do research because in the in the whole world there are so many out there. 
right? So there are, must be some, you know, very uh, similar type of application, but it's okay because if there are many, then you should, you know, do research and what's the, you know, bad way. And if um, there are many but it's not so popular, then there must be some very negative point. So try to find that negative point and improve it. So that's the way you can you can do. If there are so many, then hey, just forget it. It's not the only the solution. So you can you can continue if you want to really want to continue on this idea. Then you can you know, do the research and then try to find what it's what makes this you know, system you know doesn't work to the you know people. So so application is you know really you know, so so there are so many out there. Yeah. So in, in so many different countries, and so it, it's not, you know, uh, it's international, right? Okay, thank you very much. And what um, is your next activity? Next activity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Research. <laughs> yeah, research and the, the, after this we have to do probably the system like this, the change to find out where is the problem that you can target and to find the solution that yeah. okay. that okay. And uh, the, another thing I liked uh, out of your presentation was you thought really about the, you know, how to make it sustainable. Yeah. Right? That point it's very, very important, especially for the application. Right? So first thing to think about the application is to how to um, make people use this application. And then the next one is how to make it sustainable sustainable to make people continue to use it. That's another you know problem, right? Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. So all you have done very, very good. Very, very good. Thank you. I really um, appreciate your all of your work and I really like all the solution and I'm happy that you understand what I really wanted to tell you. Good. Thank you very much. So this is actually, uh, that's it for the workshop. <laughs> and this is what you have done for the, these two days. And you did really, um, this is a big picture, problem definition, ideation, architecting, business synthesis. And using these kind of tools, two by two metrics, brainstorming, CDC, two, two by two metrics and brainstorming may not have been, uh, you know, um, you know, new to you because it's really common and conventional. But I think maybe you get some, you know, idea to you know do it, use it effectively. And CVCA must be a new one because it's uh, this method is actually developed by one of our uh, faculty members. Uh, originally started our. Uh, Graduate School of System Design and Management at KU University. And make iteration by finding insights. So this is all about this workshop and this is how you iterate. This part you have just done, insight and next activity. And you decide what to do, research, field work, or some activities using some other tools and do the iteration. Okay, so how was it? <laughs> okay, so it's time to announce you about the interview. <laughs> okay, so um, is it? Take a picture. <laughs> One session will be completed already. Okay. So then, after that, we should take pictures again. Okay. Today is today is session, right? Today. So uh, it's very fine today. So let's take pictures outside. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, let's go out. 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 Let